Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the Co-Optional Podcast. Yes, it is the 10th of May, 2016. We are on time. Can you guess why? <laughs> who, could be, who could be the link? I'm, tr- I'm racking my brain. Well, it's a tough well, one. Mm, I'll think on it. I'll Co-punctional. It. Punctual. In Jesse's I defense, I think he's just always fashionably late. Just, there's nothing fashionable about jesse cox like that i will say for a fact mm-hmm. i think uh, it's cool that you're giving him the benefit of the doubt i think it's a very kind thing to do for somebody try, like jesse. that but you do. i mean I'll, I'll give you the credit for that but i think in this case he does not deserve it he has done nothing to earn it two out of three man i was saying this before the show started two out of three i've been on the show now three times assuming yeah. before this unless you're like actually jeff it's two boom you're out of here now i'm but Two out of three, no Jesse Cox. So now it's, I'll tell you what, if I'm ever on again and it's three out of four, we got to have like a, we got to have a talk. We got to have like a come to Jesus together, yeah. 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 An intervention. There's something, there's something deep down in his heart that he's not telling you. We just need to know exactly what's going on there. Got to know. Yeah. It's it might be important. our difference in, in opinions on Star Wars or something. I, I Frankly, I don't know. I have no doubt that that could very well be it, honestly. <laughs> Considering him, I think we know him well enough now that to impugn upon his Star Wars knowledge or his particular opinions about the canon is in itself a dangerous thing. Yeah. To put it lightly. To put it lightly. Welcome to the Co-Optional Podcast. We occasionally talk about video games. Our special guest today, three-time returning guest, I believe. So, you know, we seem to get along with him pretty well. That's always good. EG in control. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. Always a pleasure. It is absolutely... Our pleasure to have you. It's great. We were just actually on the desk together over the weekend. Not in that way. We were casting StarCraft 2. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's, that's a euphemism, by the way. So obviously that was, a euphemism. Uh, yeah, you've actually stunned me. I'm like, oh, it's going to be like that, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, oh. it's I've, awesome. I've had a coffee. Things are getting saucy. That's how it goes. You guys have me beat. Mm. One coffee in, and it's just... <laughs> I very rarely drink coffee, but uh, some people do not know that I'm very, very rarely a coffee drinker. So when I do, it is super effective. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's wonderful. It's like someone just plugged me in. Oh, I mean, I miss, uh, I don't know if I miss it necessarily, but I remember it. It was nice when you could just have it. You're like, whoa, whoa. Okay, you can, like feel it going through your blood. You're like, oh my god. uh, Yeah, you could, you could feel it tingling in your shoulders. You know, that's, that's a thing. Hmm. Um, for me, I've realized drip coffee doesn't do anything for me anymore. I just like oh enjoy drip coffee, but do so you have to have it intravenously now? No, if I, if I go to a place that has a double espresso, that'll get, that'll like shoot right in. I'm like, oh, all right, let's fucking do shit. Okay, yeah. My problem with it is also tends to shoot right out. That's the issue. Mm, I was waiting problem. to see where you're going with that. Cause because there is like the, I mean, if you want caffeine, dude, you go to like a Seven Eleven or some gas, some gas station, <laughs> and they they just flat out shamelessly they'll give you a gigantic cup. It's like five shots, and then there's Gu- Guaran in it or something like that too. It's like a little bit of an energy drink. Yeah, they don't care. They're like, you know what? There's <laughs> nothing like, in there. You might die drinking this. It is possible. It's yeah. fine. It's totally fine. There's, there's another one right behind you. Yeah, we had a fun time. We we decided to go, all go to dinner together after the StarCraft was done. You know, all the casting team, casting team, significant others, etc., etc. Elkie showed up, you know, legend that he is. Crazy French poker player with his porn mustache and his tiny Asian uh, waifu. Which is, to be fair, when, you know, those old Warcraft 3 and StarCraft Brood War players, they always seem to... Uh, find themselves an Asian beauty queen somewhere. And I don't know what it is about them, you know, but it's, it seems to work out. Yeah, there's some kind of collective mind sharing that StarCraft players tend to both like poker and gorgeous Asian women. I, you know what? Someone should do a study on it, because I, I, frankly, I don't understand. You know? I don't understand it either. But we were all there, and uh, we were having dinner, and we decided, you know, uh, because, frankly, we'd been roasting Nathanius all weekend. Like, it, he was the shortest of the group, they had to give him a box to stand on, to his chagrin, no doubt. He was not very happy with that. They had to give him a box to stand on behind the desk because he was significantly shorter than everyone else, so he was ruining the camera perspective. So he was standing on a box, so we were roasting him over that, and then we decided, you've got to... 
you've got to drink some coffee. We're going to keep giving you coffee. We're going to keep giving you espressos, dark coffee, at, at, because if you don't have it, you're not funny or interesting. So we just kept ragging on him. We just kept drinking coffee. <laughs> it's just getting more and more wired. Oh, through. In our defense, though, it did work. Like It, it was did. really funny. Like, at he first, was a he's lot like, more interesting. He was like, really tired. Then he had two coffees, and he, he was the one zinging the jokes back and forth. And that's... That's why it's okay. I mean, everything John said is true. Like, there's reasons why we tease him, and he's like the newest broadcaster of that group. Have all been casting. For, we like, have been casting for five thousand years, which you know <laughs> is a little bit unfair. And he's only at like three thousand years, so it's like we're all just you know he he he's the one that we get. But Nate is also ridiculously funny at being teased and like taking it and then kind of dishing it back to. So yeah. he's just the perfect storm. That is very true. That's... Sometimes that backfires, though. You give somebody coffee, and it just like. Mentally, they're still exhausted, but their body like just feels gross. They're just like, I don't like this. I that's still a, like that's me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a coffee guy. When I when I have coffee, I sweat, and I hate sweating. Caffeine does that to me. I, I I'm told it's not just me. It's something that does happen to people. But huh? Yeah, I don't like caffeine it. Caffeine makes you sweat. Whoa, you shouldn't yeah. drink caffeine. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like heart problems. I've got to be honest. Like, maybe, maybe it's not for you. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, guys. I'm a perfectly healthy. You Google this shit, okay? It's real. You Google it, it causes sweat, makes you want to poop. Google EG in control. You will find his full medical records. He is in perfect health. No problems. I'll put it on right now. No. It's, <laughs> it's, it's hit or miss. I sometimes, well, I drink like, uh, I drink Monster, you know, so, and that doesn't yeah, I was going to say, Jeff's medical records brought to you by Monster Energy. <laughs> Uh, I'll give you credit. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Branding, there's water in there. He's lying to you. It but is water. They, People thought this was real for a while. Yeah, that all you drank was I monster drink, always. Like, three of these a day, and it's like, yeah. well, no, guys, I'd be no, dead. No, you would, you would be dead. There's not, not even a question about that. But you, you did introduce me to a monster, monster I liked, from. actually. Now it's yes. awkward because we're both trying to talk at the same I don't time. Know which now one. it's like, I'm waiting for you guys to will Dodger something. finish or will I finish? Nobody dad knows. Said monster, so I'm like, my dad. My dad used to like for a year. He was super addicted to monster to the point where I would get into the truck and it would just smell like monster in there, and I was really? like, I can't do this. Yeah, because he would always drink them when he was driving, so <laughs> it would just smell like monster in the truck all the time. I was like, this is the worst. I hate this because I don't like monster at all. Yeah. Yeah, I, did. I, I I love Monster, but what I mean is I specifically love the Zero Ultra White flavor. It's a, it's like my favorite. I don't really like energy drinks at all, but I like that one. You were the dealer backstage for that. You were telling him, you were demanding that the runner go get us the Ultra White, whatever it is. <laughs> and, and everyone was just drinking that. I like the, uh, there was a Fruit Punch Juice one that they gave mm -hmm. us that I thought was actually drinkable. You know, as opposed to the other ones, which is like drinking a vat of noxious chemicals the juice mm -hmm. one actually tastes like a real beverage it's like all right this is cool i could i could drink this and that's dangerous you know? well <laughs> secretly sliding in copious amounts of caffeine as well yeah like, it, it's now, in there we're somewhere we're gone we're done we're done you don't know um, pomegranate rockstar was the one that i got into for a hot mm. minute but you can't find it very often uh yeah and then sugar-free red bull if if i if i need a thing I'll go yeah, that. the missus has that. I, I, I despise the taste of Red Bull. The sugar-free one is even worse than that. I used I... to as well, and I'm kind of disappointed in myself that I'm cool with the taste now. <laughs> I'm like, how many of these did I have to drink before I was like, man, I could really go for a Red Bull. I mean, to be <laughs> fair, I'm also disappointed in you as well. So as long as I you know, know that. you're always disappointed in me. That that's that, that's that true. Yeah, but anything. one day, one day. You know, one day I'll come to you and say, Dodger, I was proud of you today. You oh did good. Oh my gosh, and then my little heart like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're going to have to wait a while. I've got to be honest. I know, but it's, it's going to take something really big. I get yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's going to take a lot of patience, but yeah, it's all good. Well, it's a commercial podcast. We occasionally talk about energy drinks, uh, you know, which is, uh, as you're well aware, very connected to gaming for God knows what reason. Why gamers would need energy, I really do not understand, you know. Yeah, I remember back in the day when Lucasade in the UK, which was actually sort of my favorite energy drink ever, Lucasade oh my sports God, drink. Sam loves Lucasade. Yeah, 
Everyone for the UK does. It's the best. It makes you feel like super refreshed and everything. It's like, yeah, we're going to market this to people that actually do sports, who are actually athletic and genuinely need this, and it won't make them horribly fat. Now it's like, gamers, gamers, gamers. You know, <laughs> twiddling those sticks on the Xbox controller can sure get tiring, but don't worry. We've got the solution for you. Introducing this jar of caffeine. It's this big, and it's this much caffeine. You need it for some reason. We don't know why. You don't usually get energy, but don't worry. Once you're legs start twitching, that counts as a workout. So, Monster Energy. I- Why did that work? I don't know. It, but apparently, you know, that's, that's yeah. a successful thing now. Look. The, the whole, like, energy drink culture is really funny. Like, mm. Red Bull just did an activation where they had classical music and people doing hip-hop dance to it, but, mm -hmm. but Red Bull? Yeah. Okay. Because it gives you wings, y'all. They didn't even do that. They didn't even do that, dog. You're like, that's, that's, <laughs> you're way more intelligent. Yeah. They just, they're just like, yeah. There's people dancing to classical music, and, and they're like, You should drink Red Bull. Does that, does that inspire you? Do you want to drink our drink? <laughs> and they're, they're just in the fucking background, like, and it's like, it's got that artsy, you know, like, postmodern, like, zero clutter scene where they're, like, dancing to a grayish white blue backdrop. And I watched it for yeah. a couple of minutes. It didn't make me want to drink any Red Bull, but it was just like, <laughs> why? Going on? I think Red Bull like stopped giving fucks years ago. Honestly, it's just like we yeah. have so much money, we have got to spend it on something. Let's just do some some weird shit. You know, I think honestly, Red Bull is the corporate embodiment of what some guy who inherits like five billion dollars from his late great father <laughs> has no idea what to do with it. Acts like it's like, can, can I buy a boat that will carry my slightly smaller boat? It's like, yes, yeah. absolutely. Although at that point, yeah. it's actually called a ship, by the way. If it can carry another boat, it's called a ship, mm -hmm. not a boat. So just get that right. Uh, in a extremely important ship and boat news, Boaty McBoatface does now exist. However, it is the submarine on board the, uh, the Attenborough. Uh, they, for those who don't know the story, a UK research vessel, they put out a public poll, terrible idea, for what they should call the yeah. ship. Of course, oh, the top no. voted was Boaty oh, McBoatface. Yeah. Uh, they refused to call the ship Boaty McBoatface, but they did, in concession, which I think is a fair compromise, uh, name the research submarine, which was inside the ship, Boaty McBoatface. Because that is technically a boat, <laughs> and their excuse amazing. was that the other boat being able to carry a boat is now a ship. So it can't be called Boaty McBoatface, it yeah. would be Shippy McShipface, which sounds too much like Shitty McShipface. So... Right. Yeah, you know, it's a fair that's, point. I think that's, that's reasonable. Like the best case scenario, though, by the way, if you the the whole putting it out to the public to name something thing, like it's always ended terribly. I, I think small mm. towns might have gotten away with it or something, but in this era of the internet, every time I see that go around, it's like there's Hitler that's number two. It's like something obscenely inappropriate number three, but that makes its way onto the news because they have right. to. I believe it. And what was the number it? one is just like the worst. Yeah, like, <laughs> was it the, the, the new they flavor of Mountain Dew they, were? they <laughs> were? That was the issue. I think they put out a poll for the new flavor of Mountain Dew and they got various entries from 4chan such as Hitler did nothing wrong, Gushing Granny, Fapple was in there at some point. <laughs> <Fapple>. <laughs> That's a good one because that's good. That's good enough to make it past the Mountain Dew execs. They're like, yeah, I like that. It's we don't. We, yeah, yeah. No, nobody knows what's wrong with that. And then I would love at one point for something like that to get on the market before they realize what the fuck's going on. I mean, sending Pitbull to Kodiak, Alaska. All credit to Pitbull. He actually fucking went and was apparently a really nice guy. So you know. <laughs> Good for him. You know, they sent him to literally the most remote Walmart on the planet on purpose to get rid of him. <laughs> and he honored it. So, well done, Pitbull. Fuck you are, did, man. You are All truly now Mr. Seen. Worldwide. You've been to everywhere in the world. Mr. Worldwide, yeah. He He's got to go everywhere. God, Hitler did nothing wrong. Like, I would love it if, if for some reason it was ironclad by the lawyers, like they had to do it. <laughs> and, it <got> <laughs> and then just Jesus on the shelf, Christ. man. Mountain <laughs> Dew. <laughs> the internet has basically ruined uh, democracy as we know it like we've now proven that democracy is the worst system of government we can't trust anybody uh, with anything as if the u.s political process wasn't enough of an indictment of that i uh, think this is before you were in america john and maybe i don't know if you watched any tv back in the day dodger but there the, i'm like completely desensitized all this ridiculous drink stuff because there literally was and only lasted like a month but there was a, I believe it to be a Budweiser commercial where these, these, you know, two attractive people, a man and a woman, are roller skating and then shooting hoops and doing, like, 
ballet or something like really working up a sweat working out and then at the end of it it's them throwing back the new sports beer by bud light how do you have a what is a sports beer well like i said it only lasted a month but it was it was on tv and it made see that kind of thing like that sounds stupid ridiculous but for me it's so deep it's so much deeper than that like i'm thinking (laughs) of a boardroom full of execs where enough people thought that was a good idea that it got out of there. Then I'm thinking of the production set for the commercial where there's people like, like action and there's like skate skating. And then like, like practicing chugging a sports beer and like (laughs) so many people involved and it got out. And then when it flopped, that was a genuine surprise to a bunch of people that make six figures, drive nice cars, pay a lot of taxes. Like it's so deep, man. And it's, how did this not work? I don't know. Like, yeah. I mean, they're like, you know, you, you got to break a few eggs. You got to try out some stuff, right? You got to do some experiments. Like, that was fucking horrible. <laughs> and that's happened. It's the shit. I do not understand still what a sports beer is or why you could ever have something like that. It's a very odd combination. Well, it's gone now. It didn't work. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, dead. it's out of here. If I Google sports beer, what happened? Oh, you know what it was? It wasn't, I don't, they didn't call it sports beer. I think it was like zero calorie beer or low calorie beer or something like that. And then the campaign was about how you should be able to drink that beer after working out because it'll refresh you and also not get you fat. Right. Well, apparently it like- do everything that you did. What's yeah. interesting is that a lot of feminist websites seem to really like the idea of sports beer, according to Google. Mary Sue, Jezebel, beer as a sports drink, hell yes, says, says Jezebel in 2014. <laughs> Canada has developed a beer sports drink, says the Mary This seems a little out of character for them, I'm going to have to admit. Oh, it's a secret brand deal. Did they disclose? I oh! bet they didn't. I bet it was literally just a paid promotion. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> wouldn't surprise me at all. Oh, Jesus. All right, welcome to the Corruptional Podcast. We occasionally talk about video games. Let's try and actually do that for once, shall we? Uh, Dodger, let, let's start with you. What have you been playing this week? What's been going on? Uh, I I played that that twin stick shooter, the Neon Chrome game. Oh, okay. Um, It's like a... It's supposed to be like a cyberpunk top-down twin stick game. Yeah, I heard about uh, that. It had a pretty cool purpley sort of neon logo that's like, yeah, this kind of looks like Blood Dragon, you know? Yeah, yeah. When I originally looked at the screenshots, I was like, uh, I don't know. It For some reason, it looked at first glance like a Newgrounds game, which is right. like the, the worst sort of Never review. Never a good first impression, right? But uh, wound up playing it, and it, it actually looks really nice, I think, for what it is. Um, I, en- I enjoyed what I played of it. But at the same time, it just felt very, um, it's like a, it's like a procedurally generated sort of a situation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you run around and you're like trying to find keys so that you can open up doors so that you can get to the next area and stuff like that. There are different classes that you can play and the different classes basically just, um, make it so that either you can hack things or you have a different type of gun, you know, one is able to hack stuff, but one has like a really good shotgun and stuff like that. Uh, I, I don't know what to say about it, really. It, there was nothing new, mm. you know? It was just kind of like, okay, this is a very basic twin stick shooter. Um, but it's got the roguelite in it. Like that, that's been the thing over the past year, right? It does, but I think we've, I, I think we've hit this point now where Roguelite has to also mean that you are constantly developing the person you're playing. Does that make sense? Like, I think, yeah. I think Binding of Isaac fucked it up for everybody. Because now, every time somebody plays a game like that, there's an expectation of, oh, okay, so I'm going to constantly be getting new gear. Mm. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have all of these opportunities to, like, swap out my gun or to make myself better somehow. Um like a a constant interesting leveling up system and that's hard to achieve right like that's that's a hard thing to put into a game so i i think that i've fallen for it like i've i look for that now and if i'm playing a game and i'm not constantly developing in some way especially with a with a twin stick um i i feel kind of disappointed i feel like the game was too basic and i don't know that that's fair but that's kind of what i i as think i think it is fair now. because i think that the genre expectations were probably yeah. defined by isaac you know yeah. i think that that's fair to say that that was the biggest 
roguelite, you know, of a new generation said, hey, we're roguelike, and then we turn around and said, well, no, you're not, because you're not like rogue, which is the whole point of the definition in the first place. Right. But you took some elements from that, you know, randomly generated dungeons, kind of a little dungeon crawl thing, the permadeath aspect, different one every time. You know, those are aspects from that. But one of the defining parts of roguelite is that you have this persistent progression beyond the character that just died. You know, every yeah. time you do something, like Rogue Legacy, for instance, you get something out of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And the game changes and evolves and gets sometimes more difficult, sometimes easier as you acquire more stuff. And that's mm -hmm. a reason to kind of play through again, because I feel like every individual run in a game like that is maybe not as good as it could be, because it's using, like, a level that might not be that great, you know, because it's been procedurally generated. Procedural generation has a tendency to produce a lot of shit, you know, and it, even um, Gungeon has some problems with that, even though their runes are handcrafted, they, and they just put them together in different ways. They still have that problem where you might go through an entire level, and they, you know, if you get the first level and you don't get a gun, then generally the first boss um, is enormous. fucking awful, because it takes it, forever to kill it. It's the same with Isaac, you mm. know. Um... But I think because there's such a huge variety of enemies at this point now, um, a huge variety of locations, of items, it just makes it so that you don't mind as much. You're like, oh, I'll just restart. Yeah. And then next time I'll get something totally different. Like, I know that the likelihood of me getting that item again is so low because this world has developed a lot at this point. And I, it's almost, it reminds me a little bit of MMOs, how it's really hard for MMOs to catch up with WoW now, right? Because WoW has so much in it um, and they've had so much time to develop it. I think it's the same thing when people make roguelites now, roguelites now, because- Because of Isaac. There's, yeah, because there's just no way to have as much variety as Isaac has. Yeah, because it's been working on it for like six plus years, you know, this is the second iteration of the game, they have a massive DLC expansion, they've got a bunch of updates for it. Yeah, you're totally right, you know? And it's going to be a problem, I think, with a lot of genres where they get compared. It was the problem with TF2 as well, it's like, well, why not just play- TF2's got more stuff than this, how can you launch a game that doesn't have as much stuff as TF2? TF2 is almost a decade old, like, it's got that much development behind it. How could you possibly, you know, how could you possibly develop that much? Mm -hmm. yeah. First of all, it's kind of an interesting like that that's been going on for a little while and i always i, I kind of wonder what what goes in a, a game developer's mind when that when that happens like they make a game that very clearly is a part of a genre that has an all-star like someone that's just kicking ass in it. and then i understand the argument where they're like well no like this is our passion and we thought there's enough differences for it to be good enough and sure like the game will do well but it always like that comparison is always made and it's always going to be less favorable if you're not exceeding or like like uh, evolving the concepts. Like if you're not taking that model and then really putting a different spin on it, if you're just the same, only less, every time it's ever talked about is it's always like, yeah, pretty cool game, but it's not WoW. Pretty cool game, not StarCraft. And then they get, like, I always see the same thing where they're like, no, ah, we can have three guns instead of just the two. It's like, well, that's not it, you know. It's interesting yeah. that that's happening. Yeah, I think it's happening with Souls as well, you know, because obviously people want to pursue the Souls success. People are like, oh, well, people like really hard, kind of slow-paced, dungeon-crawly, third-person action games now. I was like, well, I mean, yes, but the question is, do they like that or do they just like the way Souls does it? And if you're too much like Souls, you'll get compared negatively to Souls because Souls is very good at what it does. And if you're not enough like Souls, then people probably are not seeing the same things in your game that they liked in Souls in the first place. So there's n they won't play it. Right. I think part of it is also taking the time to look at the genres, like the Venn diagram of genres that you're going mm -hmm. for, right? Yeah. And identifying what about that genre is so compelling. Um, like, like for Neon Chrome, it's a cyberpunk game, right? Like that's how they're marketing it. But because it's top down and because the style is a bit more minimal, you don't get the cool aesthetic of cyberpunk out of it. And I think that's what's so compelling about cyberpunk, right? Is all of the little details of, like, yeah. meshing. Um, yeah, you're totally right, actually. I was looking at the screenshots and I never got the notion outside of the skills, which is like, oh, okay, this guy's kind of like a decker, you know, this guy's sort of yeah. a, a bit of a hacker guy. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, I look at the aesthetic in it and I don't see cyberpunk. I see... Yeah. I actually there's, saw like top down. Everywhere and there's neon. <laughs> yeah, it's like I saw kind of like top down door kickers, kind of like modern day 
anti-terrorist strategy, like, more so than anything out of that. It almost it reminded me of, like, the old uh, Rainbow Six planning stages. And it's like, that's not what, you know, if I'm going to a cyberpunk game, I want, like, neon everywhere. I want cool robots. I want super awesome weapons. You know, I, I want wireframe. I want to see some really cool, like, retro tech in there as well. You need something. everything to look really cool. Yeah. You know? Like, and Neo Chrome does not do that, cyberpunk. right? Doesn't seem to do that, which is unfortunate. Yeah. So oh, well. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with the game. Like it's it's a clean game, but, but you're ruined I'm, by a better game. I'm looking for more out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, that's what happens, isn't it? Like, it's not okay anymore to just release an all right game in that genre because there are yeah. better games in that genre that you could just be playing anyway. And that genre also lends itself to repeated play and a lot of hours. So I think people that play roguelites are much less willing to buy into a new one because they just say, well, I can still get another run out of my old one and mm -hmm. I don't have to pay any more money for that. So it's. I think the genre is becoming yeah. massively oversaturated at this point. I, I would like to see the principles apply to other games because a lot of them seem to be like top-down dungeon crawler. And there's a couple that are not like that. You know, there's a couple of space-based yeah. ones. There's like Risk of Rain, which is a side-scroller. And there's even a few first-person ones. But outside of that, most of it is like, we well, want to be Isaac. It's like, you're not. You're not Isaac. Yeah. It's funny. It's like a, it's very cyclical. This keeps happening where a game comes out. It's revolutionary. It's really cool. It sells and does very well, and then a lot of mimic games come out, and they're yeah. just basically supposed to be the same thing. Only they're usually markedly less, mm. and yeah. they just they don't do very well, or or they do, and I don't know because it keeps happening. Like uh, I get the MMORPG, you know, what WoW did to that genre. I understand people chasing that because there was yeah. a couple other. They kept getting called WoW killers. And they obviously never were, but they mm -hmm. did do okay. So that makes sense to me. The other one is like a MOBA that, that that had a huge for fuck's sakes. I think we're still riding that wave, but like a new one comes out and it's like, yeah. no, you're worse than League. You're worse than Dota. You're just not going to do very well. And like, but what if? But then, but then like the Binding of Isaacs and, and some of these other games too, and other genres, the same thing happens and they're just worse. I wonder at what point in time there's like a hive mind collective game developer moment of clarity where they're like, you know what? It doesn't mean we can't come into that genre. But it means we got to do it better and do it very different. You know, like you can't just do the same, only worse. I don't get it. Well, someone's getting smashed to pieces by the sounds of it in the background. I'm not sure where that noise is coming from, but it's I mean, the end of the world over here. Yeah, you're totally right. I mean, the, the additional thing about that, especially with MOBA, is that there's an additional layer of difficulty upon developing and getting a new one to become popular, which is that most of these games have persistent progression, which either requires monetary investment or a huge amount of time investment. And as a result, you don't want to leave your current game because you've already invested so much in it. Right. So trying to rip people away from League of Legends becomes nigh on impossible unless they have grown to absolutely despise League of Legends. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's a very difficult thing to do. With the exception of Dota, but even with Dota, you collect items, you know, and they're all cosmetic, but it's like, well, you know, I, I maybe bought some crates at some point. Maybe I bought some chests and unlocked some stuff. Maybe I bought a soundtrack or a skin for this game. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, why would I go play another... I have to get on this treadmill all over again. I've got to learn new mechanics. I've got to uh, learn new heroes. I've got to buy more stuff. And it's like, oh, shit. I, you know, I, don't, I don't dislike the game I'm currently playing enough to jump over. And it might actually be why we see some of these games changing their business model. Like, there's been several announcements lately that free-to-play, what we thought were going to be free-to-play games, are actually going to be uh, buy-in. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Lawbreakers is a good example, right? You know, that Lawbreakers is entering a genre now that Overwatch pretty much has on lockdown in terms of, like, in terms of its level of publicity. Everyone knows about Overwatch. Everyone's excited about Overwatch. And then Lawbreakers come along and say, well, we're kind of doing what Overwatch is doing, but we're a bit edgier. We've got these anti-gravity mechanics. We've got less cartoony characters. And they started off free-to-play, and everyone looked at it and said, oh, God, it's a Nexon free-to-play game. This is going to be awful. And then they said, no, we're going to change it to buy-in. I was like, okay. And there was a, there's another one, uh, Atlas, is it Atlas Reactor, I think, is a forthcoming sort of simultaneous turn-based tactics game that actually looks really fucking awesome. That was <laughs> going to be free to play, and now that's buy-in as well. So we're almost seeing a shift back to premium titles because nobody wants to get into 5,000 different free-to-play games when they all have their own massive progression systems and all have a huge amount of microtransactions. Right. You know, I just, at this point, I actually agree. I want a game 
where I can buy in, have access to all the stuff, either immediately or within a reasonable length of time. I don't mind a few unlocks here and there, as long as it's not ridiculous. And if you're going to put in some microtransactions, then just do something that's cosmetic. I don't mind you selling skins and hats. That's fine. It's when you start selling, you know, other things that it starts to become a little bit suspect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think if... If you post-launch enough, you can totally sell new content. You know, like StarCraft selling the Nova missions. I don't expect sure. those for free. You know, there's going to be new acts in Battleborn for the single player. I don't expect those for free. I've been but... okay with XCOM's post-launch DLC. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I agree. You know, I I'm actually looking forward to playing Alien Hunters. That It adds a bunch of new armor. It's going to add a bunch of new weapons. Alien leaders that are going to drop special crafting materials and things like that. That sounds neat. That uh, definitely sounds neat. And especially considering that game also has a ton of modding support as well. Gotta admit, that's pretty freaking yeah. awesome. Uh, but... You're right. As new people try to enter the genre and the genre gets more saturated, it's more difficult to tear people away. And I think maybe the first casualty of that, sadly, as we sort of move on to, is probably Battleborn. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. I, I would think... say, well, before we get there, let me say this too, because I, I thought this this topic of discussion is really interesting to me. It, it's a little bit of an old subject, but like, for all the reasons you just said, Total Biscuit, like, League and Dota hard bought a lot of people like league obviously for that free to play but then microtransactions level of like people have been doing that for a long time they're heavily invested then dota yeah. going more the valve route where people like probably literally did drop 200 bucks on it if they didn't drop 200 bucks they're also just heavily invested through time and then in comes blizzard who's one of the big 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 actors they launch a really fantastic moba game like heroes is a, a very solid game but they launch it into a genre that I feel like was already, like, it was two nation states, and that was it. There's nobody yeah. else, like, nothing else. And the game's doing okay, don't don't get me wrong, but it's not doing Blizzard good. You know, it's not it's not crushing a genre and, and defining it, like most of their other games, moving on to Overwatch in a second. But that was such a weird choice to me, and that was, like, that was very anti-Blizzard almost in the sense that, like, they've been the ones to define genres and dominate it. This was them coming into coming in a late. defined yeah. genre and then finding out just because they're Blizzard doesn't... I mean, again, the game's not a flop. There's a lot of people playing no, it. There have it's been not. time. The tournaments are doing okay. But it's very clearly a distant third MOBA in a genre that is that is up there with CSGO. I don't even think it's in third. I think um, I mean, knocking at Smite's numbers, I think it's actually top five. Like, I think Heroes of the Storm isn't even as popular as Smite is. Smite's got several million players. Uh, whether Hots has, I don't know. I mean, they never really released anything. Um, so I thought you had something to say on that. Oh, I was going to say that I I understand why they made Heroes. Mm -hmm. Because after after making Hearthstone and realizing, oh, people are actually very interested in having an accessible version of this game type. Mm -hmm. okay. yep. I think looking at that, they said, okay, well, if you look at MOBAs, a lot of people feel like, League and Dota. Dota's more... But, the hardcore. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they're um, both really fucking hard. Like, it's, feel that, yeah. that Both games, yeah, are really hard to get into at this point specifically mm. with the community being as developed as it is. Okay. So I think taking that information and also the information that they got from Hearthstone, they were like, if we make a MOBA that's more accessible, you know, and, and take what we learned from Hearthstone and put it in there, um, we, you know, we might, that might be the only way we could get involved in this genre at this point. I think that's a, that's a good point. And, and to even go back to what we were saying earlier too, like if you're going to go into a dominated genre, you have to do it differently and hopefully better. Mm -hmm. I think similar to what Dodge was saying, like they did the multiple maps is a new con new ish concept to MOBA. Is, yeah. Um, the teams leveling as opposed to individuals. So I, I feel like under that scope i think you're exactly right i think that was the gambit that they took and it's not like it's a failed one i don't they would never it's, say this it's doing don't fine enough money on it or anything like that right no, I don't think so. They're doing fine enough. The problem is what I mentioned earlier. It's like you, you're you trying to rip away at that point the audiences of two incredibly yeah. um, incredibly popular games that have these accounts where people own virtual items on that, w that are worth quite a lot of money and people don't want to... They don't want to jump out into another game where you've got to, again, pay for more shit, which right. actually, again, I think is why buy-to-play coming back is a good thing. You know, 
I know Blizzard would have never sold HOTS, but that might have been the way to do it. If they'd sold HOTS for 30 or 40 bucks and just had all the heroes available by default and then just made all the unlockables <clears> cosmetic, <throat> I'd have preferred that a lot more. You know, in order to get all the heroes, especially to get your favorite stuff in, in Heroes of the Storm, you've got to pay hundreds of dollars. Mm-hmm. That's a big investment for a lot of people. It's very difficult to do. And I think they tried to strike gold as they did with Hearthstone again, but I think here's the big difference. Hearthstone did not have a good online um, card game that had popularity. Uh, competitor, that, that, yeah. that was, there was no competitive for it. Like, yeah. you'd say, oh, what about Magic the Gathering? Have you played Magic the Gathering online? It's hot garbage. It's, it's the it's worst. Their client is awful. Awful. And it's, utterly it's awful. It's been awful forever. <laughs> and and it shocks me that it is. It really yeah. does. Because it's like, they, that, is a li- that client is a license to print money, and they fucked it up. To be fair, yeah. they were very, very early to the party. They were one of the first. There were a couple of smaller games, like Shadow Era, that were doing relatively well. But there was, yeah. there was a huge gap in that market to release a hugely popular accessible CCG. But there was not a huge gap in the market to release a casual no. MOBA or Dota style game because people were already committed to the existing ones, you know. Right. And that's not just even to talk about the big three, League of Legends, Dota, and Smite. There were plenty of other smaller ones right. hanging around as well. Awesome Nauts is a great example. That game's been around for like four years. It's still popular. It's still got a good player base. That's a lot more casual. It's a little bit different, but you can play that. So it's become a lot more difficult to get into that. Overwatch, I think, comes along kind of at the right time, where people are like, you know what, we've been playing TF2 for 10 years, it's time for something different, we want yeah. something. Yeah, it, and sure. And, and it, it worked out by the looks of it, you know, it's had a very successful <laughs> open beta, there's a huge amount of hype around the launch of the game, it's launching by to play, I am very interested to see how well that does. Mm-hmm. But along comes also Battleborn, which, as we've discussed many times before, is not really the same genre, you know, if you play the game, it's not the same as Overwatch, but... People are now calling Battleborn the new Evolve because they're looking at the concurrent players and they're, at least on PC anyway, we don't know what they're like on on console, probably pretty good, I'd imagine. But they're seeing it fall like, oh fuck, this is going to be like Evolve again, where in six months this game is going to be dead. And yeah. I mean, I've said it many times before, I'd find that a shame. I mean, I've been playing it's... Battleborn every day. I know, Dodger, I know you've been streaming a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, Sam and I have been playing it pretty much every it's day good. too. Yeah, we enjoy it's not it. just Battleborn, though. It's interesting. Like that, and that's why I think this conversation is like a building in the coolest direction for me. Overwatch has been in development, development, excuse me, for years. But when it finally came to like starting to show it and there's beta and stuff like that, I can't remember the list. It's not just Battleborn, guys. There was like 11 games almost exactly the same. They're like uh, Team Fortress successors. And a lot of them had the same, it, which was weird too, same art direction, like very Borderlands, very colorful kind of thing. Yeah, right. colorful. Like they, but they all, all like similar play styles. Obviously, different takes on it. All similar art directions, and they were from from most of the major studios, and they all came out at once. But I think the majority of them have even fizzled out, or just aren't even worth discussing because I think none of us could name them because they've fallen so far off the track. But because uh, Overwatch is, is the clear favorite here, but it's just that was yeah. funny too, and that's been going on for a while. Like, uh, there's been comics, and then you know, like Marvel comes out with something, and the DC comes out with like the similar character that's you know that's at the same time. And, like that happens, I get it, but this was a crazy one where they all went in on on a Team Fortress type shooter at the exact same time. Yeah, I, I do it- remember that back in the day. Yeah, and of course now you can't even remember what the names of those games were oh. because they just weren't very good. There was like a criminal one. There was what was it? Oh, called? APB. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, you guys were playing Battleborn. Then there was like it was like Bank Breakers or something. I can't remember. Lawbreakers. Lawbreakers. Yeah, yes. that's not actually out know. yet. Lawbreakers not out yet. Yeah. But well, no, 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 most of these aren't out, but they're coming out around the same time, which is just crazy. I feel like Gearbox thought that their two options were either we make the price lower than Overwatch, or we just release it before Overwatch. Hmm. And they made the wrong call. Or, or have more content. You know, and we've talked we talked about this on several shows before, that we feel like that game has a serious marketing problem, that it has been unable to communicate the fact that it is actually a vastly different game from Overwatch, that it's much more of a first-person Dota-style or MOBA game, you know, yeah. with some tower defense aspects and with uh, character progression and with a uh, much longer time to kill, whereas Overwatch is... Uh, Overwatch is closer to Call of Duty than it is to Battleborn. 
You know, it literally is, you know, short, much, much shorter time to kill, quick respawn time, but still a lot of the aspects of Team Fortress 2 in there as well. Uh, Battleborn, in, in my opinion, is like so radically different to a lot of these other games and really has only been similar to games like Monday Night Combat prior to that, Super Monday Night Combat in particular. But they weren't able to really communicate that. And I'm going to say, you know, I haven't played quite a lot of Battleborn as well. Battleborn has done a really shitty job in game of communicating all the different nuances to the player. Mm -hmm. Like, why is the XP indicator so fucking small? Like, I can't see how much XP that I'm gaining. Every time I do something, why is the game not telling me the optimal way to gain that, gain that XP, you know? Should I be uh, killing minions now? Should I be trying to kill players? Should I be building turrets? Should I be running around collecting shards? You know, should I be trying to nail objectives? I don't fucking know because the game does not really teach you the I multiplayer guess, game modes at all. I guess they're doing an update to make their UI a bit better. They're, yeah, out. they're cleaning up the visual clutter of the game, which yeah. is very important because... I, if you watch that game on Twitch, it is almost unwatchably colorful. It is in your face all the fucking time. It's well, even, eye fatigue. Yeah, yeah. even always. I, when I'm playing it, I get turned around a lot. Like, yeah, too especially much as a melee like, character. Where am I? <laughs> oh, yeah. especially you're playing the character, the the two, you know, I got on the Teenage Detective team because they make that really awesome line about it, where, she, oh, where yes, he's got the grab. Jane. Yeah, you got the yeah. grab, and then, like, often I see almost... Either I get turned around or the person faces through me. I don't know where they are anymore. I'm like, what the... What the where the... What? Yeah. Uh, it's... It, you know, the visual clarity in that game is appallingly poor. And that sucks. I mean, I love every... You know, uh, many aspects of that game. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's, like, a very flawed gem to me. But I don't know if you've also found this as well, that I found Incursion could turn into a giant stalemate. Oh, like, yeah. It's... I don't think Incursion is a very good game mode. I honest. think it's potentially a great game. I think the map design is a problem in that mode because it's that's, one lane. That's, that's exactly what I mean, yeah. That's the problem with it. It's a one lane game mode. So it's a clusterfuck in the middle. There's minions every side. There's, there's too many bosses that if you go anywhere near them without minions, you get fucking murdered. Uh, <laughs> and by the time you break through... You probably don't even have a minion wave with you to break the shield on the boss to kill it. So it ends up being... And, and then everyone's come back because the, the map isn't actually that big. So it's quite quick to get back there. Everyone has sprint. So you end up running back. And it's like, oh, great. The enemy team's back, even though we wiped them. So we're just fighting over the same fucking ground and not getting anywhere. Whereas, you know, I think Meltdown mode, because it's on a it's on a clock and it's got two lanes, is a much better game mode. Mm -hmm. I think Incursion could be good if they completely change the map design so that we don't have five versus five heroes in the fucking middle with a million minions, mercenaries, and two fucking bosses in the same five foot square area. Um, yeah. I also think having a very long intro that you can't skip. <laughs> is a problem. I think takes a, a lot of people had a problem it. with that. Not only that, this game is account-based, right? Like, it logs you into an account. It does, yes. And yet, um, I played Battleborn on this computer, did the whole prologue, uh -huh. whatever, played yeah. some games. When I went oh, home yeah. to play Battleborn, it made me redo oh. the prologue. And the prologue like, is 45 minutes long. Like, it's so long. It's unskippable? It's unskippable. <laughs> Yeah, and it's and, like and an opening intro mission. And don't get me wrong, it's an okay mission, but one of the main problems with the single player in that game is that it's decent enough, but it's on its on solo play, it's not that much fun. Like, it, yeah. you need people with you. You need Because then it becomes like a raid. In fact, they even describe it as a raid. And, and that's where the game shines. But on your own, when you don't have that synergy and you can't use your tactics to help uh, and your abilities to help someone else, it's, it's just shoot waves of shit. Yeah. Yes. Man, um, I just those things. You gotta patch that out, man. You gotta fix that. Yeah, I just thankfully you only have to do it once if you stay on the same machine, you know? Being a game that was competing with Overwatch and knowing that Overwatch is already the popular pick and they're being compared to it, they should have looked at the price point on Overwatch and reconsidered. Because I think... I think $60 for a game that people are already is like, ah, oh, I mean, it's just gonna be a worse Overwatch. I, I don't think that that was the right call. Yeah, and I think that's a down in marketing as well. Because I think in terms of the feature set the game has and the amount of content, I think it's worth 60 Like, yeah, it's got single too. player, it's got multiplayer, it's got co-op, it's got cool progression, all this other shit. You know, I think it's a fully featured product. If Overwatch didn't exist, it would totally be worth 60 bucks. Problem is, it does. You know? yeah. And I that's why I think they went with the aggressive model. 
to try and not have to compete with Overwatch, right? Yeah, you know, they, they kind of rolled the dice on that and see if it works. Just get I, in here, play it, guys, please. Pretty much. I wonder if it's done well on console, because Overwatch on console is actually going to be 60 bucks, not 40 and I think you know, maybe as a result of that, uh, Battleborn might do better. And there's also a lot less competition on console because console just has much less games than PC does. So, That's what those kids pay for games, though. Console kids. That is true. They they pay sixty bucks, and then they, they pay forty dollars for a season pass, and then they buy five dollar oh, pieces of clothing for their Xbox avatars. That's what the kids do these days, right? No. <laughs> yep. Yep. How disgusting, he says, as he buys 50 more dollars of gems for fucking Clash Royale. But, <laughs> yeah, it's... It, I mean, it's unfortunate. It, I hope it continues to have a dedicated player base, and I hope they continue yeah. to patch it, because I love the game. I think it's fun despite its flaws, and it is flawed. It is not a perfect game by any, any means. Yeah. But it yeah, is cool. I, I also really like it. I think it's got cool characters. It's got a good progression. The voice acting I think is great. It's oh god, it's funny. such a funny game. Yeah, it's a it has that gearbox humor, but put into like more of a first person MOBA mm. game, and I'm into it. Like I I like it a lot. So it makes me sad that people yeah. are like, this game looks like garbage, and I'm like, shut up, you don't know. <laughs> you don't. I mean, they, they may have a point in saying You're that. An idiot. It's yeah, so visually it, but... busy that they might say it doesn't look very good, but I think if you play it, you don't feel that way. But mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I think it's a valid criticism to say that you know if you look at a video, you're like, this is a fucking riot of colors. What the shit is going on here? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, supposed to seizure born in the chat. Is that just well played? Yeah. Speaking yeah. of that issue, though, I, I think even with Overwatch dominating, I know you guys aren't well, John more so obviously, but aren't super esports people, but uh. Overwatch is definitely being put in the esports arena, by the way. It is, yep. And man, oh man, does it need a lot of work. Like Spectator uh, mode-wise, right? Yes. No, as a game, it's phenomenal. I love watching like really well-organized teams, because you can't... You're not just like, a, I'm a Farah and you sit on Farah for the entire game. That's just almost never going to happen. Yeah. Everyone has to rotate through different characters, different situations different missions, map types. Like, I think that that level of the game and then the skill set that's differentiated between all of them and, and kind of spread out, really cool. Like, the eSport potential is is wildly there. But, God, having a game that's playable in eSports is literally maybe half the battle. The other half is being able to watch it yeah. on a decent level. And Overwatch, that was like a, that was like a huge oversight where they're like, huh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's I think not. You you switch between personalities. And if someone's a Genji, good fucking luck understanding what's happening there. Unless you're a you know pretty hardcore player, like it's it's going to need a lot of work. I think it comes back to what we were saying earlier as well that um, when you're attempting to develop something and someone else has a lead on you, it can be difficult. I like to bring as a comparison, you know, the most popular esports FPS in the world right now by Country Mile, which is CS:GO. That's mm -hmm. had five years to work on its spectator mode and. It, there are some really nice little subtleties in that mode that work very well. For instance, um, grenade path tracking. You know, the fact yeah. that when you toss a grenade, it shows exactly where it went and it draws on the screen. Another thing which I think is fucking genius is instead of having health bars, they made the silhouettes the health bars. So you yeah. see the enemy, they're, light, they're lit up in red because that's the target. Obviously, the player doesn't see that, but you as a spectator do. And as they take damage, it fills or like, I can't remember if it fills up yeah. red or if it gets less red. I think it fills up red. And that's super smart because you can look at, you're supposed to be looking at the stuff that's getting shot at, right? But they're also giving you all of that information on the very model that's getting shot at. Fucking smart. Really good. And it used to be a nightmare to watch, and now it's really great to yep. watch. But they've had five years to fix that, you know? And Overwatch it, it, has not. It's not even out yet. Right. And, and, you know, not that we need to do this, but to toot their horn, they actually, like, uh, revolutionized a lot of that, too. Like, the wireframe through walls. Yes. Uh, that was done in other games. They borrowed that for CSGO. They brought it over. Um, you were talking about seeing their health on the on the wireframe of the body itself. They also do, they'll show a line where the gun is aiming as well, like yeah. when they enter into a, a site. That's really, really cool stuff. So I agree with you. They've had a lot of time to do that. I guess I'm that ridiculous guy that's never developed a game. I have no idea the concept of it. And I just look at a game like Overwatch, I look at a company like Blizzard, and my expectation, perhaps, again, super unrealistically, is have it ready to go. Have it close to ready to go. Have it somewhere ready to go. Because this game is launching at the end of this month, if I'm not mistaken, a couple weeks from now. It is. And Same, yeah. there's people getting signed to fucking... Pro not that that's Blizzard's fault at all, obviously. No, no. People who are like, all right, 
this is my livelihood and like <laughs> oh god uh, Blizzard isn't actively pushing it as an esport in the way that they they have rammed hots down people's throats in terms right, of an yeah. esport. Like they have thrown a huge amount of money at it. Uh, teams signed uh, expecting the game to blow up, and it kind of hasn't. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. definitely there. You know, it gets a decent amount of viewers on its tournaments. No doubt about that. Say. Yeah. Oh no, uh, heroes, heroes. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, here with heroes. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, they haven't done that with Overwatch. Like I, I went to um, what was it? I expected them to do show matches at BlizzCon, mm-hmm. and they didn't. They didn't do any esports content at all with Overwatch, even though I think it was playable. And if they're yeah. letting it grow organically, I think that's the right call. Because honestly, they let Hearthstone grow organically before they stepped in, and it grew a huge amount of viewership. But they need to support it. Like I think the biggest priority once they launch that game is watchability. Shrink those fucking gun view models, get rid of some of the particle effects, and then improve the spectator mode a a mile, you know, 10 miles, 20 miles. Yeah. You've got to make it much, 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 much better so that people yeah. can actually broadcast this damn thing. Yeah, because the game's fine. Game's top notch. Great shooter. It's yeah. got a huge hype behind, man. People are really, really getting erect about that game. I, I, I think they've been erect for more than four hours, and they should consult their physician. So, yeah. Yeah. indeed, you know. Why, why, exactly why did we take the blue oh. pill? I will never stop making that joke. I think it's wonderful. So, uh, yeah, it's. Yeah, Overwatch is still fun. I think the they said the open beta doesn't it end today? The open beta? Uh, yes. I heard. It's yeah, I mean, I logged in this morning and it's still playable. So I, I don't know if it's in today. Yeah, I I mean, I don't know if they're going to keep the servers open for the guys that they gave more access to, and they're just going to cut off the guys who just got into the open beta. I don't know how they're going to do it, but they're also one of the one of the saltiest uh, scenes I've ever seen in my life was when Overwatch was released just for the the top streamers. <laughs> oh oh God. yeah! Only watch. <laughs> only watch. Yeah, dude. Uh, you know, I can't wait for only watch uh, to not be a thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wonderful. I think the the thing about it was that they expect they did this with Hearthstone and they did it with Hots. With Hearthstone, it worked because Hearthstone is a very watchable and entertaining game mm-hmm. to sit there watching your your favorite streamer play. Hots is not. Did- did they uh, miss now there's Overwatch. Though? Was there a reason for the rage? Like, did they say, "Hey guys, it's going to be an open beta"? No, just they didn't. No, people were just salty that they couldn't play. Really? That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I they, I they... also wonder, and this is a pet theory I've had for a while too. There's been this has been I don't it, it, relatively new on this wide of a spectrum. I guess is uh games that are mega fucking playable, like very well. I guess it, I mean you can you can attribute to the the rise of Twitch, but like. A lot of these games enter beta, and I can watch people play damn near the... I mean, it, it is. It's the entire game up to a certain point, months before the game comes out. You know, like like they did that with uh, Dark Souls 3, or... It is called Dark Souls, right? I always, I question myself now, because I've said it wrong three times, and I was like an idiot. It's one of the biggest I, games. I, I assume so, yep. Anyways, yeah, that, that came out, and it was a good month before the game launches, and streamers were playing it to, like, the first boss or whatever. I really wonder the effect that has on a community. Like, there's obviously the, the methodology and the thought process that it, it really gets people ramped up. They're like, oh, my God, I can't wait to play this game. But I wonder how many people, too, are like, no, I actually watched a Lyric play through it, so I don't need to buy it. I don't want to play it. That's been a constant debate last couple of years. It came, it came, like, a deadly into focus, I think, with un- a very sad case of uh, the very, very niche game, uh, which was created as a tribute to a dead kid, basically, uh, that dragon cancer, where mm-hmm. they put out... Uh, a blog that was explaining, look, you know, we think we've been actually hurt by Let's Plays rather than helped. You know, Let's Plays have not translated <laughs> into sales for us. And we think that people are literally just watching the game. They're getting m- not the entire same experience, but a lot of it. And they're just, and they're not buying it. And I know other people, you know, more radical, more vocal people have compared full Let's Plays of very narratively focused single player games to piracy. The idea that wow. if you can just watch it, then you don't need to play it. I make the counter argument that if you make a game that is actually worth playing, then people will play it despite watching it. But yeah. if you're going to make a very narratively focused game, you're defeating the point of making it a game. You might as well have just made it a, a movie at that point. Because if it's you can get the same experience yeah. from watching it. But I think, but there's, uh, I wouldn't agree with that. Because you controlling a person inside of a narrative is, is a different impact than watching a movie. 
it can be. I think it yeah. comes down to how the game does it. Because like, I don't believe that there is any difference between controlling your character in Dear Esther and watching Dear Esther. But I do believe there's a difference in Firewatch because you actually make some choices. Like, it's about character agency, right? Mm. The yeah. games that deny you agency, the more agency they deny the character, the less point there is in actually playing it and the less difference there is between playing it and watching it. I think if it's an emotional experience then you feel far more emotionally invested if you are a person who is like yeah. walking around in that world. I think that's fair to say. And I think there's, I think to your point, Dodger, my counter argument would be like stylistically and, and certainly with some games, I think that's absolutely true. Like I, I want to play that character. Like this game is deep. I want to feel those emotions. Like I am more, uh, you know, I'm more invested when it's me controlling them, making the choices. Absolutely, but there are other games too. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm an outlier, and maybe this is the, the smaller percentile of people. So that's why this keeps happening. But for me, like, I know this is a terrible example with most people, but I didn't buy Witcher Three not because I didn't think it was a good game. Uh, it's because I watched a shit ton of streams, like while I was doing other things, and it looked really cool. It looked really awesome, but it was such a massive game and I had seen enough of it and enough of the stuff was spoiled for me that I was kind of like, eh, I don't have time to play that big of a game. So watching it was yeah. just fine for me. And then what was that other one? The one that had the nemesis system that was mighty, mighty repetitive. Shadow Mortal. Shadow Mortal. I was going to buy that game, watch people play it. It was cool enough. It was really fun to see the fights, but the fights like got really, really repetitive. That's an Arkham system in a nutshell, off. right? You know, yeah. it's that system is always going to be like that. And, I think that the, the interesting thing about Mordor is that obviously it sold very well, did very well. I think with an open world game, those are genres that absolutely can benefit from Let's Play because you can show some of the crazy stuff that can happen and you want to experience that for yourself. Plus, there's a ton of agency in a game like that. You can wander wherever you want. You can go yeah. kill whatever you choose to do. You know, you want to do side objectives? Cool. You want to just pursue the main story? That's great. Yeah. You know, you want to get different skills for your character. And I then think that's why some bad examples. I think a lot of people are not going to agree with me on that. But I think for me, a, a big example was uh, Heroes of the Storm. Uh, yes. It was playable for like four months or whatever, or three months before the game ever came out. And I did play some of it. You know, I played with the fine young lad here, Total Biscuit and stuff like that. We, we had some good we times. Play, but yeah. by the time the game was coming out, there wasn't enough to get me excited about, about jumping back into it. It was like I had already played it. Um, I'm not going to be a hardcore heroes guy, so I spent my month with it or so, and then that was it. Uh, and I think a lot of games are doing that these days, where like the big streamers are playing uh, the calling and stuff like that before it comes out, and I'm having a really good time watching that. And again, a lot of people are going to get in there and play it. I'm not saying it's murdering their sales, but I think there I are. I think it's quite the opposite in that respect. I think that's one of those genres that absolutely benefits from less playing okay. streaming. I think most of them do. I think any multiplayer game benefits from that because every single game is going to be different. You know, and to me, it's like that's when you you give full control to the player to tell their individual story through the match. Single player games that are scripted, that are narratively focused, that take player agency away. The more you do that, the less I think a game would benefit from well, I think the let's right. play, and may most, may most indeed suffer. Doing this. It's not. It's like every game is doing this these days, right? Um, really, I, know that, I know that as a as a person who played a lot of Overwatch in the beta. I've specifically decided to not play it until it comes out now because I played so much of it that I'm like, I can feel myself not as hyped as I was. So I'm like, no, no, no. I'm going to step back for a while so that, you know, I can come back into it and be like, yeah, this game is really fun, <laughs> you know. I feel the same as you with uh, early access games. It's why I avoid playing the vast majority of them. I think I've only played like a couple of them. I think it was Darkest Dungeon was one of them, but I felt the same thing with Darkest Dungeons. So I've got to stop because if I don't, yeah. When that game finally comes out, I'm not going to have the enthusiasm that I did. And another one was Master of Orion. Like, I did a play session of it. I'm like, this is kind of cool, but I'm going to burn my enthusiasm out, especially with a limited feature set mm -hmm. before the game's release. And I don't want to do that. I want to experience the full feature set when it comes out. And the other one was Offworld Trading Company. And I'm glad I stopped playing that because now I'm finally playing it where it has a full campaign and it's much more fleshed out. It's a fucking great experience. Mm -hmm. So... There's an aspect of that too. You know, people can even burn out by viewing a game too early. I would seeing way too much of it before it ends up coming out as well. And that can be a risk. So I, mean, I think, yeah. you know, what you were talking about with Blizzard releasing it too early to streamers, maybe it can cause burnout or it can build hype. You know, you just don't necessarily know. 
And yeah. it's a bit of a risk yeah. one way or the other to give that limited kind of access. But you got to bear in mind, if you give that exclusivity to streamers, they're much more likely to play it for you. If you say, oh, this is also completely open to the public, streamers are less interested in doing it because right. they feel that exclusivity is going to drive views to their channel. I think it's interesting, too, because it's. Uh, I wonder if this, if what you guys are describing also fits really well with kind of the mentality of gaming these days in general. Not to, like that's a gigantic, let me narrow it down. What I'm talking about is like a lot of people, like when I growing up playing games for me, it was like you paid 40 to $60, you had the game and that was it. And like that experience was in, in itself by itself. So if I bought a game, I, I was the first one to fa face that boss because there wasn't really it being streamed. I, there was no DLC coming out. So I didn't have this like, reserved excitement where i'm like oh well there's going to be more though like don't get too in involved in this no it's the whole experience is really awesome whereas in this day and age not not only is there free to play games but there's a lot of like dlc being slow rolled out of games uh, i feel like people have a very different perspective on a game when they look at it in this day and age it's not it's not like they actually evaluate like well i play league of legends eight hours a day or whatever and i i, I only paid not very much, and like secretly they paid two hundred dollars over the course of several years, but they're like not very much for that game. Yeah. So like, how much value am I going to get out of this game that's charging a ridiculous amount, like forty dollars? Holy fuck, you know. And then like, well, they did guarantee that they're going to have DLC coming out every six months, and if I buy the season pass, then I'll have all the map pack as well, like ridiculous stuff like that. So in that case, watching a game and watching someone play it, I think fits into their mindset of like evaluating the value of that game much more. Whereas for me, in the past. I bought a lot of shitty games because it said Spawn on it or it said Aliens on it, yeah. and it turned out to suck complete ass. But I didn't get, I didn't watch anyone play it beforehand, and that was like the risk that I took, and that was part of, that was like part of what could happen when I bought games. Right. Yeah, I, I think like streaming and YouTube has given a lot of power to the consumer. It's making a lot of people very paranoid, both in terms yeah. of like game publishing and in traditional games media, because like, oh god, we're being made obsolete by this. Sucks mm -hmm. to be you, but, you know, that's how it kind of works. Adapt or die. And it's good that consumers are empowered with this kind of information. That We used to have to rely on demos or on game trailers, both of which could be very easily manipulated to oh, yeah. completely misrepresent the game. I mean, even now, demos misrepresent the game. They absolutely <laughs> do. You know, and trailers do as well. Mm -hmm. All we had to trust that a game's website was being truthful in their preview and wasn't being given some kind of kickback, wasn't being manipulated with gifts or free flights or fancy dinners, you know, being made to feel important so they felt more amiable to the experience. That still happens, but here's the thing. You could still probably watch a game a week before it comes out because you know, a streamer's got a review copy or an early copy of someone broke embargo. It's now on Twitch and it's uncut. It's raw. The streamer has no interest whatsoever in being dishonest about it unless they're being paid to do so, which is always a risk as well. You know, I'm not saying that streaming is immune <laughs> to that kind of corruption. It isn't. Absolutely, it isn't. No, not at all. No, I mean we see we see a lot of that. But the thing is like. The gameplay doesn't lie. If I'm saying, oh, this is amazing, this is great, and what you're seeing on the screen looks like a pile of horse shit, then you can clearly tell that. It doesn't matter what I'm fucking saying. Mute me and see what the game is like. Watch what this game is doing, and you can tell. You know, And I'm always going to be in favor of that level of empowerment. I think anyone that says otherwise yeah. is not... It uh, does not have the consumer first. They don't have the interests of gamers first. Then those people can go to hell, frankly. Yeah, I was more... Yeah. I, I vastly prefer it myself too. Like I, I didn't buy Shadows of Mordor, and I was using it as kind of an example against perhaps the style of, of what we currently live in. But actually, you know, I'm thankful for it, and, and I think it is better. It's interesting too because it's a bit of like a an arms race, if you will. Like a lot of, there were some game devs, as you know, and I think you've commented heavily on this too, where like a lot of them, they did pay off streamers and they paid them and they're like hey you got to say positive things about this and that came back to bite some of them in the ass oh Good. yeah as it should have big way as it should absolutely but then but then also like i i want to see a little bit so hypothetically speaking i want to see a little bit more of and there is some of this but i love it when a game company is fucking bold enough to send it out to someone and say say whatever the hell you want and then it's like an i respect them for that game. oh i respect them but also i think it makes the game look stronger too because every game has something to be critical of, and if you can criticize it but still come away from it and be like, this is fucking incredible, that's a good game.
Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. Well, we're going to go at break shortly. However, before that, we would like to talk to you a little bit about the sponsor. And yes, we do disclose that shit on this show. We are sponsored today by audible.com slash cynical. That is audible.com slash cynical. You can sign up for a free trial, get yourself a free audiobook over at audible.com slash cynical. I'd like to talk a little bit about something I've been listening to continually, actually, over the... Because it is 15 fucking hours long. Uh, Star Wars Darth Plagueis is the mm-hmm. uh, Star Wars book I'm currently listening to. It's by James Lucino. It was narrated by Daniel Davis, who is phenomenal. He's got this great British accent, and he does this awesome, very... Uh, I suppose, cynical voice for uh, Darth Plagueis in this. And Darth Plagueis was, of course, the... I believe the master. Please, God, I hope I got this right. The Emperor. Hmm? To the Emperor. Uh, yes, indeed. I am in Palpatine. Thank fuck. All right, you're backing me up on this. So if I'm wrong, yeah. we could be wrong together. We can both feel... burn together, brother. Yeah, we can. Absolutely. And there are, of course, suspicions. We uh, don't know if this is 100% true that, you know, Darth Plagueis is somehow heavily behind the events of Episode 7. We're not 100% sure if that's true or how that could be possible. But... Might have been him they showed, actually, is what they're saying. Yeah, it's entirely possible. But I mean, he... And this is all about not only his quest to, you know, overthrow his master, but also to conquer death. You know, he is obsessed with the idea of immortality. He is part of an alien race who are, for the most part, intergalactic bankers, more so than anything else. No one expects that they're called Munes. No one expects the Munes to be fucking Sith Lords with lightsabers and stuff like that. Uh, But he discovers that his master has left a bunch of crazy stuff behind and... It's... The intergalactic bankers are evil. Oh, They're man. evil. Yeah, no one could have ever seen <laughs> Isn't that one that coming. Like every storyline, absolutely ever. And... I mean, I'll tell you that every time I w- walk into Wells Fargo, I expect to hear the crackle of a lightsaber erupt at some point from behind the counter. That's just something that happens. Yes, but... John. Over here, the desk is open. It, yeah. it, it is indeed. You know, would you like a three percent APR on a new platinum <laughs> credit card? Unlimited credit. Not, not, not a limited credit. They, they have a credit <laughs> limit. That's actually part of how it works. But Darth Plagueis, yes, by James Luceno. I, I've been having a blast with that. And the wonderful thing about Audible is you don't have to be embarrassed by listening to trashy books. You know, because nobody knows what you're listening to. This is why you know something like the Kindle is popular because you can read sexy romance novels on the train and nobody knows that you're reading Fifty Shades of Grey Roger. or whatever. You know, it's true. You can grab fan fiction. Put that on your Kindle. Look, you absolutely can. There's so many opportunities. Actually, speaking of Star Wars books, I've listened to, I did a lot of driving on Mother's Day because I surprised my mom. Yes. Um, but I wound up spending all of my time driving listening to Jesse's new canon podcast. And now I want to read those books, even though I don't know very much about Star Wars. <laughs> and he was wow. like, yeah, they're all inaudible. <laughs> like, yeah, they're, they're, most of them are. I mean, I picked up Dynast- uh, the, the Dynasty of Evil series. I got um, Star Wars Legends Darth Bane. Um, it's, it's actually part of the, the same series, the Darth Bane series. Dynasty of Evil, Path of Destruction. And then there's one that's just Lords of the Sith, which is apparently quite literally just Vader killing people for like 10 hours. That's, uh-huh. that's what the book is. Uh, yeah, I do it flips and shit. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. Being awesome. Flips and shit for yeah. the whole thing. There's That's a ton the of Star Wars books. That I really want to listen to. Yeah, I'm um, going to get onto that one after Plagueis, I think. But I am finally finishing up uh, Tina Fey Bossy Pants, which is so funny. Nice. A lot what of is the, that? A lot of the books that are written by comedians on Audible are also voiced by comedians, which is cool. So it's Tina Fey reading her own ah, book called yeah, Bossy okay. Pants. Oh. And it's, um, it's, it's a really funny book that's just her talking about um sort of developing into this woman who has to speaking of agency who has to just like have a lot of you know control over um over her as a brand and how she presents herself and like growing up and being you know a bit more like awkward and weird and and how she developed that awkward weird self into tina fey um it's very funny it's a really really funny book and yeah when i'm when i'm power walking on the treadmill I listen to Tina Fey tell me about how funny she is. You don't <laughs> exercise. Don't lie to me. We all know the truth. I, I definitely don't do more than power walking, man, because that's when I'm like, wow, I'm out of shape. I'll just power walk some more. <laughs> crazy stuff there you go folks audible.com slash cynical our sponsor today go head over there for a free trial get yourself a free audiobook there's over 180,000 high quality audiobooks with some of the world's best narrators they're all really great you can sign up to a monthly subscription which gives you credits and you can exchange a credit for 
a, basically any book in the library. Or you can buy them individually. They've got frequent sales, two-for-one offers. I have far more audiobooks than I can ever possibly listen to because of that. <laughs> uh, there, there's some really, really great stuff on there. So go check it out. And we will be back after the break with uh, more information. Uh, well, I, we don't give information on this show. I'd love nah. to say that we do. More stupid discussion about video games. You're listening to the Co-Optional Podcast. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Co-Optional Podcast. Uh, let's do some more video games, shall we? It's, uh, I've dipped in, I've dabbled in a couple of little ones that I don't have too much information about, but seem kind of promising. Uh, one of which is on 3DS. It goes by the name of uh, SteamWorld Heist, which is the sequel to SteamWorld Dig. It is really nothing like SteamWorld Dig at all, outside of the fact that they both have robots in them and they're kind of westerns. SteamWorld Dig was sort of a weird it was a weird resource gathering platformer thingy where you went into these mines and you tried to get as much gold and gems as possible to upgrade your dude this one is you are a space robot pirate cowboy thing which is cool nice. and you have to do various missions and it's it's a turn-based side-scrolling strategy game but it's uh, based very much on shooting with with guns uh, but one of the cool things is that it's focused on trick shots so you get your little, uh, you know, space revolver, whatever that is, and you can send a bullet off to ricochet off various walls and hit the other dude in the head. It has hats that you can steal from the enemy robot cowboys, which I thought was kind of neat. And you can get various classes, uh, which have different abilities and weapons and stuff like that. You can take cover. Uh, this this sort of action point system, which governs how far you can go. It's not really like something like worms or anything you've got like a limited movement and then you take your shot but i can see why people would make the comparison but it is a single player turn-based rpg i'm hoping it'll come to pc eventually it came to 3ds first just like steam world dig did uh but i'm digging it a so far uh ah. yeah it's i i just love the idea of uh, cowboys in space i think is the best you know cowboy bebop i guess told me that that was cool and i believe it so there you go Nice. That's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted because I think I can hear Jenna talking in the background. Maybe. Nope. That was. That's not, her. not a, That's not the excuse. Dex bonus. I don't accept. That was what not her. Hearing? That was not her whatsoever. I don't know I who think it was. Care about your game, John. She what might am not. I hearing Anna. I'm hearing no. a lady in the background of one of your chat. Back me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing a lady's voice in the background yeah. of one of you. My window's open in my apartment. Shit just happens up there. Ah, uh, maybe that's it's part of living in uh, the Oakland area. I love living in the middle of nowhere. It's great. <laughs> <One> <laughs> that day. is not a problem for my me. Dream. Hey, you got dogs bringing skunks in, man. That's your that's your version I mean, of it. Didn't bring right. the skunk in per se. Just brought the essence of skunk with them. There you go. So <laughs> there is that. Yeah, that I will is... tell you, I don't have to deal with that. Yes, that, that, is, that is a fair point. That's it. Yeah, that, that is a fair point. Uh, the game that I've been playing a lot of this week has been Offworld Trading Company. And oh, that sounds... about that last week. I'm I did, yes. I'm playing a lot more of it. Yeah, I'm getting quite a bit better at it. I mean, it, it has a fairly brutal learning curve, I would say. The tutorials are now a lot better, but when you dive into the campaign, which was something that was not in the early access version, it drowns you in information. It even admits that it's drowning you in information, but then it doesn't do anything to resolve that. Right. It's just like, it's just like yeah, there's probably going to be a lot of information here to take in. It's like, yes, there is. Are you going to do anything to help uh, clear this up? No. No, we're not. <laughs> it's like, more. okay, then uh, I guess I'll figure it out. But in the campaign mode, it's a series of sort of randomly generated scenarios, which you're dealing with a bunch of different competitors, and you are sort of trying to become the most favored company with the Mars colonies. Like, you, you want to help them out so much that they give you the majority stake in, you know, being the main provider of all the things that they need. Mm -hmm. And in between each mission, you have a certain budget, which is based on how much money you actually made and how much debt you're in and you can use that to hire contract or permanently have on staff these different engineers which will allow you to build different buildings and also if you get multiple engineers for the same building it increases the efficiency of that you can also buy like different technologies and things before you go in to sabotage your opponents with or give you an advantage and then once you get in 
you're probably going to be facing a unique scenario that's got some weird shit going on, like there might be plasma storms that bust all of your stuff. It may be that your your workers constantly go on strike or whatever. You've got to deal with that. And you have seven solar days to make as much money as possible and also buy for the colony as many buildings to grow the colony as possible. So you, you are balancing between making money yourself and then spending some of that money to upgrade the colony because by the end of it the colony's going to tot up how many buildings you bought for them versus everybody else and then they're going to give you a share and if you end up being the minority stakeholder the income that you're getting fucking sucks if you're the biggest shareholder in the company you gain a permanent benefit every time you uh, manage to do that so you get something going into the next one that sticks with you so uh, so it's all kind of persistent and you're competing with the same companies in different places and you're dealing with the fact that they might have more technology than you do and all that sort of thing it's a really cool campaign mode it's just fucking confusing when you first jump into it because that you get a you don't know uh what to invest your money in initially because you're like, well, oh, I, I, should I buy an engineer for this? Like, oh, I don't have access to half the buildings. If I contract an engineer for this one map, will that be enough? Do I have to permanently hire them? Is there any reason for me to be mining that particular resource on this map? Maybe that map doesn't even have that fucking resource. You know, I've got to look at the game information to figure that out. And it's that information is very limited. So like, Ugh, what do I spend my money on? Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, help. Uh, which which faction do I play as? It is like just being dumped into the deep end. But once you get the hang of it, that is one hell of a compelling game. It's so much fun. I love the idea that the way you win in an RTS is to literally buy all the shares in your opponent's company. Literally force them into retirement. And, and they even they make a joke about it too. When you get in, if you lose, your it signs a check with your name on it and said your services are no longer required. We basically just bought your ass. It's right. just like it is a it is capitalist capitalist evil game and playing in multiplayer in particular because of the number of sabotages that you can buy to fuck with your opponent is really fun and it makes people get super mad at you. And I love that. You just see them set up. You've got to keep an eye on your opponent. It's like, what is he making his money on? You know, what he's trying to dominate the market. Maybe he's trying to dominate the market in electronics or fuel or chemicals. It's like, oh, he just set up this brand new operation. He's just spent all of his money building all these uh, mining. What if I hired fucking pirates to shoot down his trade ships? Or what if I had his guys mutiny and send the resources to me instead? It's like, you can do that. And that's really cool. And if you play with your friends, I don't think you're going to have many friends anymore. So I think we're going to have to experiment with that. Let's see how no. far our friendship can go. Let's do it. Let's figure it out. How much tolerance do we have for each other? So that game is fucking phenomenal. And I'd highly recommend it to people. It's very different. It's still a real-time strategy. You've got to be quite fast. You've got to make decisions in real time. But it's about making money and fucking with your competition. It's not about blowing them up, necessarily. Uh, well, there's a bit of blowing yeah. them up. You know, you can buy underground nukes, which are pretty fun. Or you can dynamite your opponent's building. But it's not about blowing them up. It's about <laughs> making more money than them. Sometimes through very, very illegal means. You know? And it's got a cool sense of humor to it as well. Like the robots are like, we would just want to be your friend. And they're actually all about world domination and all this shit. It's like, why won't you be our friend? And all this stuff, whenever you blow some of their shit up, it's like, why are you doing this to us? It's like, because you're evil. You're evil robots. I recognize this. Don't hide. Don't hide Someone from me. Someone in chat just called it a Trump simulator. Trump simulator. Well, yeah. the thing is, that would imply that Trump was a successful businessman, which, as we are well aware, he is not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. this is a game about selling steaks on Mars, you know, but they, you tried to sell them at Sharper Vision Mars branch or something along those lines, you know. This, this guy is the presumptive nominee for the Republican Party, ladies and gentlemen. We are all fucked. Ah. There you go. Uh, let's uh, move on to something else. Anyone else got anything else they've been playing this week they'd love to talk to about? Aside from Battleborn, what I've been playing a lot of. I play a lot of Battlefleet Gothic Armada, which I'm guessing you talked about, John. Uh, we have, but I'd love to hear your opinions on it. What do you reckon to it? Uh, I just, I was really impressed with how, I don't know, like it very much so captured the capital ship feel. Like the turning radius in the game was really dramatic and very, you know, if you make a wrong choice, you're going to be floating into that wrong choice for a while there and yep. it's very painful. Yep. Uh, the what I really liked about it, kind of going back on something you talked about earlier too, is just like the customization of it. it just mm. the various different upgrades you can do, the different kind of tech paths you can do with the ships at each class level. There's multiple choices, and 
one is more of a carrier battle cruiser and one is more of like a barrage battle cruiser and just stylistically can do very different things. The races are very different. It just had a lot of depth for a game. I absolutely did not expect that from. I expected it to be a bang bang shooter shallow. Shit game, a shit Warhammer game or whatever. And I was just so pleasantly surprised. And the campaign, which honestly is all I did. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a big PvP guy. I did when it was in pre-release. I I'm a not a big games. PvP guy. Says the professional StarCraft Two gamer. I just want to oh, point that out. Non StarCraft games is what I guess. I, like I didn't play any of the XCOM PvP and stuff like that. So well, to be fair, the XCOM multiplayer is just awful. Like it's not even worth wasting your time with. There you go. I'm a wise man. Indeed. <laughs> but yeah, the campaign is really fun, and if you like Warhammer at all, it's actually one of the better kind of. Um, takes on Warhammer style, like really fucking cheesy, but also mega dark, and it'll get you going a little bit with excitement. So I, I had a really pleasantly fun, good time with that, and uh, I just absolutely did not expect to. Warhammer still has the stigma for me that when a Warhammer game comes out, it's probably a terrible game, but it's lately starting to be less Sometimes. Strong. Yeah, I mean, they've farmed their license out of basically anyone who'll take it, and that's resulted in a run of the gamut between really good stuff like fucking Vermintide and Battlefleet Gothic, and then really awful stuff like Snotling Fling, and uh, there's like Warhammer Carnage or something, which is this Eisenhorn. awful, like, runner game. Eisenhorn is not great. I, I wish Eisenhorn was a lot better game than it is. Admittedly, it's still very much in development. There's hopefully a lot of, a yeah. lot of time to, to make that game not suck, but right now it's not great. Uh, Dawn of War 3 is obviously on its way as well, but Battlefleet Gothic, there, there is that, uh, the authenticity is dialed up really high in that game, like, it, yeah. the, the models are pretty much identical to the tabletop models, there, there's a lot of authenticity there, the way that each race handles is quite similar to the tabletop game, but obviously in real time, it evokes the feeling of the tabletop while not being turn-based, which I think is difficult. You know, the Eldar are incredibly fast, whereas the Orcs are like, we have no maneuverability at all. It is the only thing we can do. We have a giant red button that we press, and that makes us go faster forward. And that's it. Like, they want to ram you. Yeah, and they're going to ram you. That's what they're going to do. Or, or they're going to just, like, completely misjudge it and just overshoot you and just shoot off into the into the nearest asteroid belt and die. You know, yeah. that's another thing that can happen. I like the fact that the game not only has a, a kind of an Imperial story-driven campaign, which is really cool, but it also has skirmish-based campaigns where you can play yeah. all four races and uh, soon to be five with Space Marines being added. So you can, you can start a little fleet of orcs and you can go and fucking wreck shit in different scenarios. You can earn things, which is cool. I like the fact the story driven campaign you can actually make mistakes you can lose a mission mm -hmm. and you still keep going but it affects it like uh there's a, early on there's a mission to stop abaddon from getting away with an artifact i fucking failed it and now it mm -hmm. says on the side it's like some shit's gonna go down because you failed this like yep. he has the hand of darkness so you're gonna be fucked at some point by this <laughs> but you can you know it's got almost like an XCOM like str strategy level yep over that and you've got a couple of different choices uh you have to do like there's a there's a compulsory mission but you also have like one more deployment that you can use to do a different mission like to defend a world from being taken over and go fight orc pirates or something uh which i thought was really neat i think that's going to give it some replayability so that's awesome and it obviously it does have yeah. multiplayer pvp i i admit to not having played much of that i heard that invader was just nova cannon spam all the time but yeah battlefleet gothic is phenomenal and it's sold stupidly well as for a game bear in mind battlefleet gothic is not well known you know that is not a well-known brand at all i don't think there's any doubt about that but shockingly enough the game has actually sold over a hundred thousand copies already wow which is mind-blowing to me it's like battlefleet I mean, gothic that's one of the smallest warhammer franchises it's a niche yeah. of a niche but warhammer is a powerful franchise True. and that constantly yeah. catches me off guard like they just print money on some things. And again, I think that's part of the reason why there's so many shitty Warhammer games, because they're just like, well, it's got Warhammer on. It's going to sell kind of okay. Let's go let's go yeah. half-ass on this. Um, but it's, as you said, it, it's becoming less true. Vermintide, very good. Battlefleet Gothic, very good. Space Marine for the console was not bad at all. Uh, the Inquisition game coming out looks okay. I think it's Oh, called... Inquisitor Martyr or whatever its name yeah. is. You know, it's just kind of the Diablo-esque game by the guys that made, yeah. uh, what the fuck's the name of it? Uh, Van Helsing, the Van Helsing series. Yeah. Doesn't look bad, man. It looks good, yeah. It'll be alright. Space Folk, actually. There's some, yes, uh, finally some gameplay, gameplay for that. Out there. That looks good, too. 
Yeah, it looks like that's going to be very Left 4 Dead, very Vermintide-esque, which will be good. Although, I'm concerned about Space Hulk when it comes to the fact that, you know, how many enemy types are they going to have? Because yeah. traditionally, Space Hulk does, it's basically Gene Stealers, Gene Stealers, and Gene Stealers. The they show, I, and you, you're right, they showed Gene Stealer, they talked about Hybrid, and then they talked about Broodlord. Broodlord. Yeah, I'm but what else are they going to do with it? Maybe a fourth, and then that's going to be it, which, you that, know... It might not be good enough, you know. Yeah. I mean, if, if if they're gonna make it kind of Vermintide esque or Left 4 Dead esque, it's gonna be the the Gene Stealers regular thing. But the thing about Gene Stealers is that Gene Stealers they're not fucking zombies. They're actually really fucking yeah. dangerous. And I hope that that's reflected in the game. I don't want to be gunning down hundreds of Gene Stealers because that's not ever how the board game was. That's right. not that's not how that doesn't reflect in the law. The cool thing about Space Hulk and the idea is that the the Imperium's toughest warriors, the guys in Terminator armor, go into Space Hulks that are super dangerous, and you know what? They probably fucking lose. Like, as p there's part of the lore where almost, I think, the entire chapter of the Blood Angels is wiped out in a Space Hulk. The whole fucking lot of them. You know, and they send their best armor in there, and it doesn't matter because the Gene Stealers just rake through it. Yeah. So you can, if you get into hand-to-hand -hand combat with a Gene Stealer, you're probably dead. Whereas, if they do it Left 4 Dead style, it's like, you can kill hundreds of Gene Steals, no problem. It's like, no, yeah. no, you better not. You better not do that. Don't want that. Mm -mm. Uh, so I don't know exactly what they're going to do with that. But from what I've seen so far, they are... I mean, it looks good. It it definitely looks very good. Yes. I, I hope it is uh, really, really cool. Um, so we'll see. They, they've That's been in development for a long time. And Dodge is just like, Warhammer, yeah. <laughs> I know how you, it's look it, this is what we trade you know for you and your 10 minute anime dating sim talk you know we we turn off when you're saying that and you switch off when we're talking I get about it. some people it. turn it on <laughs> um, worship the emperor on his golden uh -huh. bone uh, <laughs> have any of you guys played uh red flag yet no no what is so that? Red, red flag is the new card game by the guys who made super fight and I think oh and, now I know what you're talking about yes I think super fight is a fantastic game we're doing um, at some point red flag came out at the same time that billionaire banshee came out and they're very similar games so the idea of both of them is one person is looking for a date right and okay. everybody else who's playing has to pitch a person to them okay um the way that red flag does it is much like Super Fight, you pick up four white cards and three black cards. The white cards are all, you know, positive, good things about this person. And the black cards are all things that could be terrible. Red well, that's flags. racist. Not only uh, do blacks have less representation in the game, but they're also all bad. Well, they're red in this one. I should. Oh, I, they're red. Oh, all right. In, in that's Super Fight, Native that's Americans get the shit. God damn it. <laughs> Why is it always the Native um, Americans that get just ragged on all the time? What's wrong with that? So anyway, the way that it works is is like one person's looking for a date and you can be like, I met this person, they're a millionaire, and they will love you unconditionally. And the person's like, cool. wow, that's so cool. And everybody pitches their person and then you go one at a time trying to fuck up everybody else's dude. With right? a red flag, basically. With a Something red flag. Something that's terrible yeah, about so it. Yeah, so it's like, oh man, yeah, this or this, totally, but... It turns out that they also eat poop burgers every day. I don't know. Wow. So, so that's like that's the way that uh, red flag works. And then, of course, the person has to say which one of these people that they would date, despite the red flag. The way that billionaire banshee works is, um, you it's only two cards. Uh, there's perk cards and quirk cards. Okay. So perk cards perk are like all right. good things, quirk cards are bad things, but they're all super weird. Super, super weird. So it's like, all right, I met this girl. She has a kangaroo pouch that's <laughs> really warm. It totally fits you. You fit in perfectly. <laughs> there are nipples in there. That's that someone's you fetish. At any point. And that's like the perk, right? And somebody who's playing that might be like, that sounds like a quirk to me. That sounds like something that's kind of terrifying. But, like, all of the perks are like that. Where wow. it's just, this is really weird, but, like, sure. Like, that might be Maybe nice. it would be into that, given time. Yeah. Huh? And then the quirks are things like, every time you have sex, they will insist on licking your armpit. 
every oh, time. Oh, the what? hairier, the better. That right? doesn't like, sound as weird as the kangaroo pouch, I have what? to admit. Yeah, okay, yes. yeah and they, they vary. By right? comparison, so relatively speaking. And it's also very different in that um, it'll, it'll say, you know, the broad thing of like, they have a kangaroo pouch, that's the broad thing, but then it gives you a bunch of bullet points. So it's not like with Super Fight or Red Flag where it's just, they're a millionaire. And that's all that's written on the card. But this, it like gives you very all of these very specific benefits. Disturbingly detailed. Benefits. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I have to say, even though I love Super Fight, um, Red Flag wound up being kind of disappointing for me in comparison to Billionaire Banshee. And they also, they did the whole thing where they put out, like there's the basic Red Flag set, and then there's the dark red flags, uh, right? Which are supposed to be like the dirty ones. Uh -huh. Not very creative, I gotta say. Uh, we played with those one time, and I was like, "These are none of these are very creative." Whereas billionaire banshee cards are all really funny and creative. So, any of you who've been looking at red flag, I would recommend getting billionaire banshee instead. I think That's that it's cool. yeah. more fun. I recall us being given red flag cards to, uh, that were blank, to fill in at the yeah. signing desk when we did packs. Yeah. And I think two of us just put, like, literally, is Jesse Cox as the red flag. Like, <laughs> that was mine. Yeah, I, I did the exact same thing. I just worded it slightly <laughs> yeah. differently. So, so there's a few of those around. There's a, I mean, I almost feel like um, Cards Against Humanity is getting to that point as well, because there's only so much. And you get very yeah. desensitized to Cards Against Humanity, where you're no longer shocked by anything it has to present to you. Unless you play with your mom, I came to find out. I Yes, <laughs> I, that's probably... That's a risky business, that is. Not the, to be repeated. No, I would say that that is a terrible idea. I think yeah. the furthest we ever went with our parents was to play Fibbage, and even that got a little bit crazy at times. I yeah. would not go that far at all. I would, I would have a hard time playing any of those games with my parents, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea whatsoever. Uh -uh. <laughs> that's, that's yes. I love you, Mom. <laughs> don't, you should don't. not play Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> Ever. My mom thought it was funny. So it got to the point where just whatever was the grossest combo, we were like, is that you, mom? She's like, hee 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 hee. We're like, oh. It was me, my brother, my sister, and Anna, and, and I can't remember the exact combo, but the, the culmination was like, of course, my mom played something along the lines of, like, my biggest regret was not pulling, or not making him pull out or something. Ah, like that. Oh, yeah. God. That's rough. <laughs> and, then you, and then you've got to wonder, well, which of us was that referring to exactly? Yeah. She was just laughing her ass off. She just knew that it would be funny. It was just... I was traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've you got to admit it. She's playing the game right. Like. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that much. Yeah, I can't remember if I talk with you about this or not, but I, I have friends that Do I you? hate playing the game with. Oh, okay. Because they don't pick, like, it, it, they're not answering to the card. They're just playing, like, one could just be like, I am poo-poo, and, and then it's blank space, and that's just vagina, and they're like, ha-ha-ha! There's a lot of there's a lot of weird stuff going on with that. Like there's a it there's a meta depending on which friends you're with because oh, yeah. some Absolutely. people stop. We we had this issue uh, yes uh, last year at Coxcom where you, you literally Strippen was power gaming it because he was playing <laughs> he was playing to the crowd on purpose. Like instead oh, of yeah. picking the one that was funniest, mm -hmm. he picked the one that he thought the crowd would react the strongest to in order mm -hmm. to get the vote to win the round. It's like I know what you're doing, you know you. <laughs> And it's bullshit. Like, you're ruining everything. But yeah. people do that. They totally oh, do yeah. that in games like that. Um, I, I actually, it's what made... um, What's the fucking name? Quiplash. Way less fun oh. when playing online. Uh, because, yeah. of course, with Quiplash, which is one of the Jackbox games, you can have Twitch chat basically vote on which is the best one. And as soon as someone figured out that whatever meme Twitch chat was high on that day, they just yeah. spam that. You know, uh, we had a game with Cry where it was basically just like every answer was PewDiePie and he would be the one that got voted up, regardless of, of context. You know, it's like, what is your favorite food to have on Sunday PewDiePie. when you're in a lot of pain? PewDiePie. PewDiePie. To be fair, and weirdly enough, that actually works with the pie thing, but it's like, what is your favorite car to drive on Sundays? PewDiePie, PewDiePie. is my favorite car. It's like, and it would, it would just become that over and over yep. again. And, and at which point, like, you lose all faith in Twitch chat, assuming you had any to begin with. I asked Dolly the Seaside Donkey kept coming up repeatedly uh, for whatever. Just what? don't ask. Cry streams okay. get a little weird for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, the uh, I don't actually like Quiplash that much as a result of that. I think that 
you don't have to play it without better vote, but... games in the jackbox well i think fibbage is a much better game than quiplash is as a fibbage is a phenomenal game you know because it, it what's awesome is tricking people into believing that that was the correct answer just make it just believable enough but also you know not actually the right answer i think that's mm. uh, a game or something yeah 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 it's uh, fibbage is good um Drawful's pretty cool too. I like that. I, I love that's, Drawful. Yeah, Drawful is a wonderful game. I, I, I love I love what Jackbox has been doing with those games lately. It's they've sort of been exploiting the fact that not only do a lot of us, as we're getting older, I think a lot of us appreciate more social games where mm -hmm. we're sort of interacting with our friends. But also, those games are good spectator games. Yeah, which I think is is awesome as well uh so i think they're starting to appeal to a lot of us who are we're getting a little bit elderly for those fast games you know we can't do that anymore yeah i got the arthritis in my fingers i can't keep up this api i just anymore. don't want to move quickly yeah it does i just think it's a i think we should just relax you know just sit back and relax it's you know, they, they are great though no doubt about that another game i've been playing is uh this is not contemporary at all it is Star Wars Jedi Knight Outcasts. Oh my like, god, that is so good. Mm. It's a very good game. Very fun. Uh, huge dose of nostalgia, obviously. Uh, streaming, it's a bitch, because it just destroys... It just does not... You know, it's not a, It's not friendly with new technology. No, but it's man, not. Despite, so there's all the positives. We can talk about that, too. But one of the funniest thing, realizations for me was like how much more patience we had as younger gamers at least for me man like there's just there's just shit and i'll be like chad is this right do i have to jump up this ledge onto that thing and then walk over there to that door and they're like yep that's what you do yeah and for no reason at all jumping is like an imprecise thing in that game like you like slide off the wall like there's slight sliding yeah. There's oh, like, no. like jumping, like there. It's like an it's it's weird because there'll be like a little bit of a hang time and then like a quick fall down. So there's like a weird. That's got its own game to it. Uh, but it, but the first few times I'm like laughing, like oh, Chad, this is ridiculous. And then on try number nine, I'm like fucking shit. shit this is game. stupid. Like what? Who spent so much time doing this? Like I just get me into the fucking door. I don't care. There's no boss here. It's not a it's not a trick jump. I'm it, it's just there, and I can't get to it because I'm Can't dumb. It. Oh, it that game's got a lot of kind of quake esque oh. level oh. design in it, where you're all oh, doom indeed, where you're searching for colored keys and shit like that. I'm like, I have a fucking lightsaber. Why do I need a key? I surely I could just get through this with that. Yeah. Uh, th there's a level in uh, the sequel to that, Jedi Academy, which was arguably not as good especially in terms yeah. of the story but it did have its moments like you could have a saber staff or you could dual wield the lightsaber as well which gave you different combat styles but there was this one level in a fucking desert you crash land in the desert you got to find all the parts to rebuild your ship somehow some way the force blah 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 Right. But there's a fucking sandworm, and you can't stand on the sand for more than a couple of seconds, or you'll get eaten by the worm and have to restart the entire level again. So it's a giant platforming level where you have to jump on different things. You gotta, you gotta figure out which of these things you can actually jump on, and which ones you'll slide off and die on. Yep. And that's the worst because like, oh, I could totally get over there. I got force jump. I'm amazing. You slide off, and then the sandworm fucking eats you. You gotta start again. <laughs> Fuck that level. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it with a lightsaber. Fuck it with two lightsabers. Mm. Yep. Mm. That's what I was. That's what I was doing through that too. And also like. What's considered a level mechanic, has, like that kind of perception has changed too. So there's like ATSTs that you just absolutely cannot kill at, at this point yeah. in the game yeah. whatsoever, unless you get onto the mounted gun. And you'll trigger an ATST at, at a garage, kind of on the other side of the level. And in order, to, you can either just run past and ignore it, which is actually really tough to do. It's not as easy as just running past and ignore it. You have to, I don't know, anyways. Uh, or you like lead it to the gun. Uh, at the beginning of the level and shoot it there. So that's what I end up doing. But it's so funny because, again, the game mechanic is the ATSD doesn't walk very fast. And if you get too far away, it loses interest in you. So you're like, you're like, hey, ATSD is like, ba -ba 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 -ba. like, all right, this way. And then I kept having to learn, like, oh, fuck, it just started walking the other way again. So I go over there, I'm like, hey, like, oh, there you are. So you have to, like, kind of goad it towards you. Uh, it's just funny because because just everything's dumber and and like they're like this will be nice let's see how they get past this puzzle which is just kind of binary at the end of the day but yeah it's really it, fun it's like you got to use the entire level to do it. it it's it's very much a throwback in terms of the way levels used to be designed which in yeah. its in itself is very charming and I think it's pretty damn awesome to be able to play games like that and they still run relatively well they are a bitch to capture <laughs> I'll definitely admit I had problems streaming uh, Jedi Knight 
uh, Jedi Academy, actually. But I think that you don't design levels that way anymore. For whatever the reason. The multiplayer was ahead of its time, by the way. That is yeah. some- I mean, oh, it's still played with like the movie battles mod and things like that. Mm-hmm. I know that people love the lightsaber dueling. People still say to this day, this is the best lightsaber dueling that's ever been done in a video game. It Which is well amazing considering we have Star Wars Connect. Yeah, yeah. right. How did oh, they manage God, to top that? Do you remember us playing that? I ah! absolutely do remember out dancing Jesse Cox. Absolutely. Everyone, <laughs> oh my gosh. Everyone thought that I was drunk, I assume, because I dared to actually do the dancing game. But what can I say? I've just got more. I've got moves like Jagger, you know, and he has moves like uh, the Blob. I, there you my go. My arms legitimately got exhausted trying to play that game. I was just like, I can't do this lightsaber move anymore. I was just like, uh, oh, fuck. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't want this. No, the next sucks, anyways. That was yeah, a yes, Connect is is an awful thing. I I still love the fact that Jesse is on the top ten worst dancers on the internet in in some weird BuzzFeed list because of that video. I I just, really, poor yeah. Jesse. Good for yeah. Him. yeah, he's got moves like Java. Well, you know I mean. he did quite a few like jumping around and rubbing his butts, so I think I mean, that's, I mean, that, that's that, what really sold it. I don't think you get points for that, actually. It was you harder. Don't get butt rubbing points? No. What have don't. I been doing my whole life? I don't know. You just, you just, you just don't. It doesn't work. But yeah, I, I'd, I'm not going to admit that that the dancing game was the only fun thing about that fucking thing because like everything else is garbage in that game. But the, because the dancing was, they just took it directly from uh, whatever that dancing game was. I can't remember what it was on the Connect because I don't care. Um, just they dance. Ju- no, it, it was it wasn't called just dance. That was the dance Wii Central. one. Dance Central. That's the one. There you go. Just like yeah, um, yeah. This is basically that with a Star Wars skin and with really awful covers of popular music right now, but with Star Wars words in them. Why did yeah. why does this exist? And it is embarrassing that that's the best part of that package, when it yep. should really? by all rights be the worst. It's pretty great. Yeah. Oh my god. Gaming has created some absolute abominations in its time, it and, you know, and I think that that's maybe holiday special level of awful. So speaking of abominations, then mm-hmm. uh, I also played a couple of RTSs recently. I played Dawn of War, oh, just the original Storm or whatever. Yeah, I was just oh, like, you ah. played the worst one. Okay. Oh yeah, I was like, you know, let's go throw back. I love Warhammer. I'm gonna play a little bit of this. But kind of going back to our earlier conversation, man, when a game defines a genre, playing the lesser version of that is so fucking hard. So hard. And I'm obviously a gigantic RTS snob as it is anyway. So, like, mm-hmm. at first, the unique kill animations, the, the models, like, it's just really cool. And you're like, oh, this is awesome. Not bad. But then you get into the bigger levels where it takes you 45 fucking minutes because... Eldar buildings are invisible, and they don't have any in oh, no economy really, other than just you, as long as you have this building, you're generating money over that thing. So they're just sitting around and making little squads of units, and I have this gigantic, impossible to kill army, that, and it just literally takes me 45 minutes to find them all and kill them. And I'm like, that was terrible. Then you get into the harder level where it's just meat grinder hell for fucking ever. There's just avatars and armies walking back and forth, killing each other. And you're not really doing anything at that point in time either, except for making stuff. You're like, all right. I just love the fact, it's like, well, he's, he's brought, um because obviously you can only build one avatar at a time. It's like, oh, it's back. It's like, aren't yep. they supposed to have one of these per craft world? Like, isn't this supposed to be a big deal? Why do you have nine of them? I don't understand. The thing is, like, you're playing the worst one of that entire series. Like, That's got, what I was told. Yeah, uh, the, the problem is that uh, Dark, Dark Crusade changed from a story-driven campaign to a kind of meta campaign where you got to choose where you went. And Soulstorm was done by an entirely different company. It's mm. it's like not even canon. It's got dumb shit like, we are lost a thousand Bane Blades. Like, a thousand fucking Bane yeah. Blades? Where the fuck did you find that many Bane Blades? And I was like, Spes Marines! Spes <laughs> Spes Spes Marines! <laughs> Uh, so then like, they think was- we will die, but we will not die because of this. It's like but they call this tactic steel rain. <laughs> oh, to be God. fair, they might call a tactic that. We uh, use multiple defensive, simultaneous defensive deep strikes. It's like that sounds really sexual. <laughs> a deep strike. Uh, yeah, so that was terrible. Um, and then after that, I was like, you know what? 
I have really fond memories of Command and Conquer Gold. I found you can't buy that on Steam. No. And I was like, all right, well, I'll play Red Alert 2 because that was pretty cool. Nope, yeah. that's not on Steam either. But what is on Steam, which I did not play because I had lost faith in Command and Conquer, apparently, uh, appropriately so, is I played Red Alert 3, yes. which is where they fully, 1,000% embraced their, like, we're just cheesy as fuck. None of this is serious. And the game itself, it like has fun mechanics ish, but they even yes. got away from the game itself. Like it's not, it is an RTS, but it's like a, a it, it's a little bit meat grindery, but not as bad as Soulstorm, obviously. But just like it, it, it's why Command and Conquer is dead. Like the other Command and Conquerors were way uh, more. Fun. I mean, I'm gonna disagree with them on that because Command and Conquer Four was even worse than that. That's okay, what killed that's the franchise. That's why they're dead. This was the, this was the first the shot. precursor. Oh, yes, this, this is where. They made the game a lot simpler. I mean, you, you notice the mining mechanics in that game, for yeah. instance, where everything's kind of just automated and everything like yeah. that. And they went full on wacky with the units to the point where they were just silly. You know, yeah. they weren't even grounded in reality anymore at all. But uh, Command & Conquer 4 didn't even have bases. Like, it was more like Dota Whoa. than anything else. It was a fucking joke. It was really bad. That's too bad to hear. Yeah, if you want to play CNC Gold, there's um there's a pack I, I can't remember. It's like Command and Conquer, like through ten years or through the decades or whatever. That's on Origin. That's all the games, all of them, all in one box. Yeah. Is Origin not bad to use? Because I had heard Origin it doesn't suck anymore. It used to be fucking garbage. It's, okay, that's it's good right. now. Yeah, it's well worth. It. It's worth using now. I think it's actually a really good client now. So I might do that because uh, Gold's fucking. That's some real good nostalgia. Mm -hmm. That's actually good RTS. Red Alert was good. I thought yeah. Red Alert Two was okay. It is. It's great. Yeah, the first Hyperion Sun's all right. Like that was a good, and everyone says Generals, of course, being uh, probably the best Command and Conquer for multiplayer. Those, yes, totally. Those were good RTS days, though. Back they back. were. They absolutely were. We're hoping for some of that. I played a little bit of that um, Eight Bit Armies, which I was talking to you a little bit about a dream hack that was by some of those original devs, and it really does feel like Command and Conquer. But launching the game with only one faction and having that faction be boring as sin was an unbelievably stupid move, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, you know, when they bring out a few more factions to it, I think that it will be worth playing. Uh, but I, I agree, like, the older Command & Conquers. I mean, I, I think Tiberi a lot of people didn't like Tiberian Sun when it came out, but I thought it was great. Like, the um, the fact that they made a mechanic designed to counter super weapons. You know, like, the first yeah. game uh, it has, like, oh, you build a super weapon, then you just drop it on their base and shit goes down. But now you could have... Um, you could have a, a the Firestorm defense system, which you could fire up at any given time, which would deflect an incoming thing. And of course, everyone else could cloak and go in stealth and everything like that. So that was I like a great the way. transport in Tiberium Sun that, that you yeah. offload the, uh, the Nod nuke troopers. Yeah, they, they had a lot of really interesting units that the... Um... Here, let me chase these guys off real quick. Sh we... Penis, fart, fart, penis, oh, penis. Penises and penises and vaginas. They're not actually phased by that, guys. No. Evidently not. It's like, yeah, they, they sound like really interesting <laughs> people that I totally want to hear. I feel like that might actually just make the conversation no. more. Yeah, but like, so my apartment... Oh, God damn it, now they walk away. Anyways, um, I live in an apartment complex that has this like big open area with like concrete surrounding it. So Ann and I sometimes, like, we get really worried because we'll walk out there and there'll be someone in their bedroom like... And it's the weirdest thing. They'll be like, hey, yeah. Hey, John, how you doing? Like, they're talking like that. And we're like, I can hear every I can hear you. word they're saying. Yeah. And then Anna and I look at each other and we're like, is our window open? And it's like, yes, it is. Well, all right. We're just going to take that. So there's been times, too, where, like, I'll jokingly, like, like when I'm streaming, some woman will walk by and I'll be like, oh, grill. And I'll say it that loud. And their head will fucking rip around. <laughs> so you know, stare right. And I'm the guy in the window with my sweatshirt on and my boxer. I'm just like. <laughs> oh. Hey girl, that's me. <laughs> that weird. They just slowly get out that iPhone. And it's like nine one. Uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's legal. I'm in my house. I can say things. Uh, yeah, sorry. Sorry for interrupting. I wanted. To, I could. It was weird. People don't usually stop right outside my window and talk, but they were right there, like staring into my room, just talking about whatever the fuck. Because I can't hear them, but I know you guys can. We absolutely. Yeah, everybody can. thought that somebody had come into my room and was talking to me. <laughs> Yeah. And they were like, Dodger, who's in your room right now? And I was like, it's not me. Nobody, yeah. <laughs> yeah trying to do an internet show. Clearly. Yeah, it's... God, guys, we're trying to talk about video games right now. Serious shit. It is serious shit, no they doubt were about that. completely unfazed, though. I said, I was just saying, penis a whole bunch, and they just they kept just talking. Didn't care. It's unfortunate. It's interesting. All right. 
There's, um, there's an interesting thing going on right now. There was an RTS that came out a good few months ago now called Active Aggression. That I played a very played early version of it. I liked it a lot. Admittedly, it had the world's worst tech tree in the universe. Like, it was very complicated to figure out the build orders in that game because the tech tree UI was so complicated and every unit had, like, five or six different upgrades for it. I'm like, oh, what the fuck do I even build now? I don't... It had multiple resource types and things like that. But it was a cool game. But it was very inaccessible. They're completely redoing it. Um, I think they're calling it like Active Aggression Rebooted or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's called you're Act telling me about yeah, Active Aggression Reboot Edition. It's actually coming fifty percent off on Steam, and uh, they now have that new Steam feature, which we'll talk a little bit more about in the news section, where you can see what the most recent ratings are versus the <laughs> uh, the overall. And it's got a lot more positive, most recent uh, ratings, probably because of this thing. Like they've completely redone it. They say they're um. Oh, well, let me look at the main features here, because I think they went to a single resource economy. So, uh, oil is now converted to cash, so it's basically all about cash now. You don't have to get multiple resource types. They have redone the base building system, so you use a builder, kind of like StarCraft, just to build a building. Whereas before, it was like you had to build a building and the builder was AI-controlled and went and did this shit, so you couldn't, like, micro it if someone came to attack it or whatever. Oh, um, you airstrikes are just like you now just target it instead of having to control the planes mid-flight. They've completely redone uh, the balance and they've tweaked the UI. They've made things a lot easier. I want to try that again because I think that game had a lot of promise, but it came out and it was like very unfamiliar to a lot of people and they were very confused by a lot of the systems in it. And as I said, the tech tree is, was just like trying to figure out what the hell was going on half the time. And because everyone, you know, the guys who did know it, were just destroying me because they knew exactly what the right things were to build at the right time and I had no idea. And I thought StarCraft was complicated in terms of its build order. This game was a fucking nightmare. So we'll see. Maybe that game will be a, a lot more, a lot better now. So I'm going to go and uh, check that out and see whether or not that's actually a good thing. Uh, but that's a, that's definitely a good thing to talk about after the break that they've changed a lot of the stuff with Steam yeah. and there's some interesting discussions uh, around that. I don't think there's anything else that I played other than the Hearthstone and Clash Royale. I mean, I've been playing Clash Royale since the new update, and yeah, that one guy on the forums, fuck you, I'm talking about mobile games, go fuck yourself. But, um, <laughs> they, they've put some new cards in, they put a new live spectator system in so you can watch other people play, like, as it happens. Mm -hmm. There's a system where you could just copy someone's deck directly from their profile, if you've got the cards to make oh. it. And they've added some new uh, legendary oh. cards into the game. And uh, it... It's made the game a lot more interesting. There's a lot more cool units. There's a guy that kind of burrows. He's sort of a miner. He just burrows over. under the map and just goes and attacks yeah. things. So that's good. Uh, I know Dodge is playing a lot of that. Uh, we Most of us on the cast desk are playing a lot it. of it. I, I keep playing like one game and getting shit on and being like, fuck this game. And then I'll not play it for a while. And then I'll come back and be like, all right, I'll play a game. And then I get shit on again. I'm like, fuck this game. Never Krendor, again! Krendor like zipped way ahead he's in number two in our clan now right yeah he's at like 22 or 2300 right now yeah yeah he's about 700 trophies behind me right now and it's like oh wow he's actually i know he was competing with stripping to to be the number two in the clan sailor moon drops is a way better game okay uh, yeah. it's so good i don't even miss clash royale because i've got candy crush with sailor moon assets all over it so good oh my god <laughs> good I'm glad to hear that. That's very important. Mm, mm. I can't get into games mobile right. games. It's, I don't judge them. I don't look down on people that do. I just... I, um... I guess it, it'd be one thing, like, for a lot of people that play those games, I mean, I think uh, you and, you know, our kind of people are the exception to this, but I think a lot of people are like, I take a train to work, I take a bus to work, I, yeah. I carpool with some friends. Like, it's really nice to have a game like that. And then for the rest of us, of course, there's time to play games like that, too, or, you know, you're I wonder how many people play those games. Like, I'd love it if there was a way to know how many people are taking a shit while playing those games. And I can tell you for a fact that about 80% of my Clash Royale gameplay is done in that way. Yeah, it's I was going to say. Or when I'm lying down in bed and, and I'm just like, not... I'm not yeah. quite asleep yet. And I'm like, do I want to maybe play a round or something of something that's easy, you know? Yep. And I think that's most people. I, I think that's interesting. Most, 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 uh, you know, telephone game people are their planet while shitting. So I think that's something you guys can all kind yep. of bond over and get, get over. And just yeah, we all, who knew that one day we would bond over poop times. Uh, how is your bowel movement going right now? They're like, pretty good. It's going great. Uh, how about mm -hmm. yes, a normal flow for today? Yeah, I got um, two games in instead of just the one. So you yeah, know, it took one a both bit of them. Longer, that was good, but... you know. <laughs> oh my God. Got a couple of rounds. I mean, I've said it 
time and again, I believe that a lot of these mobile games, they design their play sessions specifically around that idea that people will actually play it while shitting. So they have like one to three minute game lights. Yep. Anything longer than that, you know, Hearthstone, those games can get too long, especially if you're playing Control, you know? Yeah. It's, it's too much. Yeah, you, that means you've got to like, you got to take it out with you, but you know, you're still playing. It's like, well, you know, got to wipe, you know, it's going to take some time. What if, what if I end up roping my opponent? To. You know, I didn't mean to do that. You know, I, I lost control. I, you know, not in that way, but you know, I uh -huh. didn't have uh, time to play my turn properly. You know, now I'm playing yeah, suboptimally. Yeah, I people get are, back for the podcast. I mean, people just, say I'm so miss lethal. You know, I mean, I don't even care if they're not spectating. They'll somehow, someone in the world will be telling me I miss lethal, even if they never saw my game. You know, because that's just how they are. So yeah, I mean, you, you got to watch out when you're designing a mobile game. You got to take all that into account. I play Wars with friends, and I like that because I do it at all the same times. Everyone's you know doing everything else, but. It's uh, you know, it's it's turn based. So if I'm like, oh no, uh, like Nate this last weekend had he, or maybe it was Sean. Sean was playing Crash Clash Royale. We were we were both like, we were, they were both playing yeah. a show or a production or something like that. It's like I don't know. I'm too competitive to do that shit. I can't. I don't like free losses. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not keen on that either. I'd, we, he joined our clan so we could play some friendly matches. Thankfully, that yeah, you know, that game has the issue that people complain about, where it's like, oh well, that guy's got higher level cards than me. It's like, well, yeah, that's possible, but simultaneously, the way the ranking system works is you shouldn't really be matched up against people like that anyway. In the friendly mode, it downgrades all of your cards to about the same level. So he just started playing. My cards, obviously, stupidly high level, so it just downgraded all my shit. And I said, right, I'm gonna take my legendaries out of the deck. Let's play. And I just like I beat the shit out of about 45 seconds. It's like that. Well, that happened. It's like let's try it again. Yeah. Well, you might you made it to a minute this time. That's great. Uh, but it's interesting to see that that actually game does have a lot of depth of strategy, even if you're playing the same thing. But the problem is, of course, you you've got to you got to fucking win the match before we've got to go back on production. It's like we you go on live in ten seconds. Like fuck, we haven't done. We're not done yet. Can we play <laughs> this under the table? Will they notice? They're gonna notice, aren't they? So it's like oh well, never mind. Still a fun game. I like it. I'll defend it to the death. I'm, I'm bringing up the, uh, I want to see our clan. Yeah, it's, all right. it's you, Krender, Strippin. Ah. Who's after that? Are you in number four? Or? No, Gmart, Gerard, and Jesse, who hasn't played in forever. That's how far I dropped. That's <laughs> you, how had a, you had a run of bad luck? Yeah. You get, you, that happens in and that everybody game. Everybody else. You're, you're better than Jesus Ken, you know? That's I am better thing. than Jesus Ken, who I'm positive played once. I'm better than him, yes. He probably doesn't play anymore. I think Force <laughs> is playing as well. Yeah, Force is in our group, Sinvicta's in there. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely something like that. I don't even know why we let Gmart in the clan, honestly. Like, he's not... He's, <laughs> Gmart, to me, is not, like, a real person. Like, he's someone that we made up as sort of a... We need a fifth, so he's that guy. Yeah. He's the yeah. guy that you bring along to your dinner to make you seem more popular than you really are. It's like, oh, he's a seat filler, like is what he oh, is. Oh, like a call girl. Yeah, he, yeah, a call girl, yeah so I mean, he's an escort, oh, okay. you know. All right, yeah. It's basically what he's for. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I'm to break. <laughs> Welcome yeah. back. We're going to be talking about the news. Oh, we have, we have so much pointless news, like... Who has the most dislikes on their game trailer? That's going to be great. I'm looking forward to this bullshit Make a conversation. Guess during the break. Indeed, I'm sure you'll figure it out. We'll be right back with uh, what is loosely described as the news, and don't go anywhere. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Co-Optional Podcast. Uh, what the fuck are you even? I was really cold, so I went out to my car to see if I had a sweater in there, and all I had was my Kikurumi. So. What's what? happening? Like, ah, ah! if you were like a normal human being, I'd be surprised that the only thing you had in your car was a fucking Kigurumi, but um, you're not, and I'm not. You. Excuse you, mister. Uh, let me look in my wardrobe for which bathrobe I should wear today. Hey, yeah, my selection true. of bathrobes is superior to your selection of Kigurumis. I can guarantee <laughs> I have more Agreed. and they're better quality. Mm. Tell you that for a fact. These as are classy. As long as I'm warm, I'm good. Yeah, don't fuck with me. I got my captain's pips on right here. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. I will fucking main phaser everything if they get in my way. That's just how it is. That's how Kirk rolled. He didn't do the fucking diplomacy shit. He's like, we got fucking phasers, right. bitch. And that was it. I thought we just, you know, laid most of the women on the planet and then they just I was going to say, yeah, and then he boned everybody. Yeah, so. it was pretty much that, you know, one way. Yeah. Fair enough. 
All right, let's move on to some news and what we could even consider news. Uh, let's let's with... talk about Steam. Let's do that, yes. Yeah. So, uh, we've alluded to it like eight we times. We have. We have. Yeah, we're going to finally talk about it. So Steam, let's be honest, like as uh, is the most dominant platform on the planet, and yet in many ways it is so ass backwards that we're just horribly confused as to how that could possibly happen. And one of the things which has been a sticking point for a lot of people for a while has been the review system on steam it's be it's very very basic for the most part and not only is it very basic but it's also sort of infested with joke reviews meme reviews you know the standard kind of uh, i post my may may green arrow things even though they're white you know and i i tell a little story and i finish it with 10 out of 10 and everybody laughs and ha 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 um and the, the, but I think perhaps more seriously is the fact that a game could release in a poor state, get railed on justifiably in the user reviews, and then never recover from that. Because yeah. people won't buy the game because they see all the reviews are fucking negative, even if they fixed all of those problems since then. Right. So Steam kind of realized that this was becoming a problem and that games constantly evolve. And it's something that we've talked about quite a lot as well, that when we do a preview or a review of a game it only really applies to that version of it. It may be a year down the line that game is way fucking better or possibly way worse than mm -hmm. what we did because games now constantly get patched and evolve and things like that. Steam realizes this, thank fuck, because it's something that Metacritic has not realized and I think that's caused a lot of problems for people, that this is the case. And as a result now, with games that have been out for a decent length of time, you have most recent reviews. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about active aggression a little earlier. This is a prime example of that. If you look at the overall reviews for active aggression, they're mixed. 66% of them are positive. However, if you look at recent, 78% of them in the last 107 user reviews in the last 30 days have been positive. Now, that's indicative to the consumer that the game has either got better since then or that the only people still playing it are the ones that like it. You know, that, that's kind of the, the, the reverse problem with the system is that, you know, reviews that you tend to get later on are probably from people that are still playing the game. They're not necessarily from new players. But thankfully, Steam, you know, has a way to tell you that. You know, if I click mostly positive and recent, I see, you know, the most positive review is by someone who has 688 fucking hours in that game. And it's like, well, okay, half of me says that's really useful because this guy obviously knows his shit. The other half of me says, if you've got 66, 688 hours in this game, you obviously like it. So we're not going to be hearing too many negative things about you. Right. But it's still useful information. I think it's providing more info to the consumer. They now have a sidebar where they show the most recent reviews next to the most helpful reviews, which I think is cool. You know, because you can see a, a nice little uh, comparison between the two things. Like there is a useful, useless fucking review here that is literally about Barbie Chronicles. That is there. Don't know why it's there. I'd ex I everyone go and downvote that because this person is not funny and he needs to learn that. You know, this will help him in the rest of his life. But this is on the active aggression thing. Hmm. So I, I mean, I'd like to hear your thoughts, like not only on the system change, but on like what Steam could do better in terms of reviews and in terms of the functionality that it gives to its users. Because it seems like even though it's been around for ten years, there's still a lot of things that are missing from the client. I mean, I, I. I can't complain because we didn't have that information before, right? Mm. It's, I think that it's a good beginning. Um, it's a step in the right direction, I, right? I do still, it's definitely a step in the right direction, but I do still think it's like a little, a little cluttered looking right now. That's true. Um, so many you know, words. You have all of these options now. You can be like, I want to see the most helpful reviews, or I want to see the most recent reviews, and I want to see, like, you know, it shows you multiple different percentages and things like that. I'm like, yes, I want that information, and I don't know how to make it cleaner, necessarily, mm. but um, oddly enough, I think the, the best... Uh, the best example of this sort of a system that I've ever seen is on a website called All Recipes. <laughs> okay. Where when you scroll down, it gives you like columns. So it'll be okay. like, here are um, the most helpful positive reviews. Here are the most helpful negative reviews. And then here are the most recent reviews. And you can click to be like, I want to just see all of them. But you can also 
quick to be like, I want to see all of the really positive reviews and how people have changed this recipe. Or I want to see all the negative reviews and see why people didn't like it because maybe it's, you know, something that will ring true with me. Hmm. Um, and it feels very clean. You just scroll down and you're like, positive, negative, most recent. Cool. I'm good. You know? Um, and this one, I think there's just like, there's, you know, the main section, but then there's a small section and there's, there's the side percentages. One. Yeah. And it's a little bit, it feels a little bit muddy right now in terms of what information is most important. Like n none of it necessarily is more important than other information, I would say. It's very it difficult to prioritize as yeah. a direct result of that. You know, there's a piece of information that I'd love to see, which I think is more relevant than anything else that could be ever written on this page, is I want to know what the person that reviewed the game generally plays and spends most of their time doing. And I want that information to be right there. I think you could do it with the Steam tag system. Because Does it see how long they played the game for, at least? You do see that, yes. So that's, that, that, that's very visible. That's a very useful metric. But I want to know, if, is this guy an RTS player? Like, he, does he play that regularly? Uh, is he a specific kind of RTS player? Does he only play old-school yeah. RTS? So he's got different right. expectations to people that play newer ones. And I think you could use the tag system to do that. You know, what it could do is it could take into account all the games in your account. It could calculate how many hours you have in those accounts based on the tags that are also on that game. And then you could collate those tags into these are the things that he commits most of his time to. So he commits most of his time to games that are tagged with action, strategy, uh, free to play, you know, or, or even something even more specific like walking simulator or female protagonist or whatever. You know, so I know I know who this person is at a glance, and as I uh, so as a result, I kind of know his bias before I even go into it. So I think yeah, that's, that would be very useful. That seems like kind of a. It seems almost complicated on the Steam level, but some maybe for like preferred reviewers or something, some kind of information like that, because that absolutely does matter for fuck's sakes, and that is how we take critiques from everything else, right? It really is. Like, like when it, IGN does a review, we know that they were bots, so it's like, okay, well, I understand. We know it's probably bullshit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 7.2 7. <laughs> out of 10, too much water, you know. <laughs> but it... I think that there's, it's very important to know the tastes of the individual reviewer because uh, as much as the straw man comes up time and again when people just, you know, uh, they get their smug face on and, you know, they whip the deck out and they just start, like, furiously jerking it and say, you know, objective reviews are impossible. And it's like, yeah, we get the idea, but that's not what people want. They don't want a purely objective review. They want people to pursue the idea of being objective and trying to at least put them, their own opinions aside in favor of looking at something from a different perspective and trying to be fair to it and put aside your own personal bias. You can't do that completely, but you can fucking well try and you should try. You know, if I, if for some reason, if I absolutely despise a genre and I'm set to look at a game that in a genre I despise, I can't just say this game is shit because it's a genre I hate. You know, you got to try and look at it and say, well, is this a good example of the genre? Because people that do like this genre, uh, they want to know that. And I think that having that information to heart is is very important, and having that information available at a glance is very important as well. Steam has never really done that. I don't know for what reason you know these people have said what they've said it could be entirely wrong and not everyone will realize that and yeah i know it's got an upvote downvote system to try and figure that out but there are plenty of people with agendas that just fucking hate a product which kind of nicely segues into what we've been seeing with the the downvotes on the um call of duty trailer yeah yeah exactly yeah. that the, you know that the, there's people there that just fucking they probably either don't even play it or it, it's, it's it's weird with that and we'll get onto that in a moment but it, it's just like, why would they even bother with that? And that happens on Steam too. This especially happens when there's a change that like the current players don't like and they'll massively react to it in a huge way with like downvotes and really negative reviews because like they feel almost like personally slighted by the fact that the game has changed and done something that they didn't like. It's what happened to Darkest Dungeon when they introduced corpse and heart attack mechanics. Yeah. For a time, Darkest Dungeon got shit on by its fan base for putting that in the game absolutely shit on and if you looked at things at that time you would believe that that game was the worst thing ever and some of those reviews are still there yeah you know they, they are still there um for, and they're some of the highest voted reviews on on that service and they, they're gonna maybe misrepresent what the product currently is so i mean it's almost like it's, it's an impossible thing to really solve but i think it's good that steam are taking you know they're taking uh, some steps to deal with it but it's just so necessary with the way that games work now. Like, yes. 
yeah. what we were talking about before, uh, what Jeff was saying, like, pretty much every game, when you buy it, you think to yourself, I wonder if this game will have DLC, or, oh, man, there's something wrong with it, but, ah, oh, maybe they'll patch it, you know? And that's not something that people used to ever think about when they bought a game. So it's, I think that it's very necessary specifically to be able to prioritize most recent reviews on a game, for sure. Yeah. There's been, I've noticed, and this is, I guess, just how people get, especially when they feel like they're being made obsolete. You know, there's been a, a sudden rise in people that have platforms on traditional games media uh, is calling for basically censorship of, Steam reviews in some way or another, making yeah. the you know the usual excuses of Steam is fostering a toxic attitude or toxic people and communities, and advocating for the censorship of reviews on that basis. And it's like, here's the thing. I mean, one, I don't think Valve's ever going to do that, thankfully, because they're very hands off. And secondly, you can't just go around like shutting down someone's opinion on a game based on the fact that they said a naughty word or whatever, because it's primed for abuse. Like, you know, yeah. that is an easy excuse. It's the same shit we've been seeing with fucking the new Ghostbusters reboot that so many people have written that, oh, well, the only reason people don't like the trailer is because they're misogynist. They don't like women. It's like, well, or, I mean, it could be because... John's like, I don't like women and I don't like the movie. Like, like what? Well, both of those things. What you know, can I, can I not, like, dislike both women and the new Ghostbusters reboot? Is that not okay anymore in 2016, you know? You know? But, no, more to the point, you know, it looks like a shitty movie and people are sick I of... I think it looks funny. Come at me, internet. Fuck yourself. Sure, feel oh! free. I mean, I, I personally think that the characters are giant stereotypes, that the uh, the black character is literally racist, you know, and it, it says she is saying all of the stereotypical things that a black stereotype in a movie like that would be. It's like, I'm not the smart one, but I got street smarts. I'm also hyper-religious and believe that I can compel ghosts out of people. And I say damn a lot and such. I'm like, I was just like, I was holding my fucking head in my house. I'm just seeing for Chris Hemsworth, to be honest. I candy. Give me yeah. a break. So, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's fine. You know, I, I don't, I don't mind. You know, the the gender bending and that is not the problem. It's the fact that those two movies were classics and they're very deep in people's hearts. They're very close to their hearts. And to see a shitty reboot, it's the same reason why people fucking hated the new Total Recall and a whole bunch of other things like that. Uh, but it's just so blatant to me. But a, people, a lot of people are saying, "All right, well, we're just going to dismiss all this criticism as these all these people are sexist." And I'm sure some of them are sexist. I sh I'm sure they are. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. So on it's the like, internet, so, John? That's weird. Of course, you know, of course some of them are. But I don't think that's the majority of them, and I don't think you get to dismiss all criticism on the basis of that, because that's bullshit and it's cowardly. And it's the same thing with Steam. You can't just dismiss people's criticism because they're rude, or, you know, they say something that you personally don't agree with, or whatever. You can't just go and say, well, you can't post your review now. You know, we only accept reviews from people whose politics align with ours. That's awfully anti-consumer. That's horrible. I'm just I'm, yeah. I, I, I'm just pissed off that people are even advocating that, and I'm glad that Steam is just ignoring those people because it's so ripe for abuse. The concept is good. The first thing you kind of said at the beginning, I really like this idea of them coming back to the review system and being like, and being aware of this situation where games do update the DLC and all that stuff. Like games have terrible launches too, by the way. Imagine a lot of them do any of that, where they're just like, the, well, I couldn't log in. And my kids are screaming at me, and it's like, oh wow, it must be a fucking horrible game. No, it could be an okay game. They were just having a tough time at that moment in time. Yeah, it's it, it, it's good the games have been given kind of a second chance. You know, I've said it time and again that like the launch is the most important thing. Of course it is, and if you launch in a bad nice. state and then you fail, that's your own fault. It's the same with like if we've got to look at a game, we can't keep revisiting it all the time. We've got other games to look at. There's way more games to play than we could ever possibly play in our lifetime. We've got right. to look at as many as possible for our audience. We can't just keep coming back to you and say, oh, we fixed it now. It's all tough shit. You didn't, you know, you needed that working on launch. That's when we looked at it. Now we're moving on. We're moving on to something else now because other things demand our time and attention. But I'm glad that there is now a method for... I think the only people that can fix that problem are users. Are get, just regular gamers. They're the only people that can fix it. Because people come into that game all the time at different stages, and then they can give their opinions, and then you can see it aggregated in one place. And it's very positive. I think it's a very good thing to do. 
I'm glad that Steam is improving that. I'm also glad they added a little thing in where you can disclose you got a paid review copy. You know, it's like, hey, you know, my review copy was free. That might bias me in some way. You know, you have to legally disclose that anyway. What annoys me is that they haven't fucking done anything with the curator system in the past year. Uh, Dodger, do you run your curator or does someone else do? Because didn't you make like an anime bullshit curator? Oh, I run it, which is why I haven't added anything to it in forever because I forget it exists. <laughs> that and the system is a pain in the ass to use. If you want to go back and update any of your previous work and you want to like add so it's like, oh, I now know that there's something gone wrong with this. I want to change my recommendation. Finding it and editing it is a fucking nightmare in the UI. You literally uh, have to skip through five at a time. And if I've got hundreds of games, which I do in my curator, it takes me ages to find that and actually edit it and change it. Not to mention that, you know, the character limit is awful. There's no place to disclose that it was a review copy. It still says, read my review here as the link, even though it's a fucking video. They haven't done anything with that system in over a year and a half. So hopefully they next decide to update that. You know, because no. that is a joke to use. The only issue that I had with it is I think the character number is way too small. It is. Yeah, that's true. I don't think they let you write enough. Like, every time I have to write in, you know, like, anything about the game, I have to pare it down over and over and over again because there's never Too many space. words. Yeah, yeah, it's like, can I even communicate what I want to do in, like, a, it's got, I think you get less characters than Twitter, for fuck's yeah, sake. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally like, I write a sentence, and I'm like, fuck, it doesn't fit! Oh, I'm done now, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. It, there's a lot of work to be done on the Steam client, this is definitely a good step forward, and, you know, we, sh we certainly should be advocating for people to express their opinion about games, because those opinions can be useful, and you've also got to, like, give credit to consumers for being able to separate out what is obviously a shitty troll opinion and what actually matters. No? I think I think you can you can trust gamers to be able to figure that out. You know? They're not gonna be so easily tricked. They get they're they're very skeptical these days, and I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, so that's good. And that leads us on to the the amusing situation of Call of Duty, what is it, Infinite Warfare? Infinite Warfare. As in, Call of Duty will never end versus Battlefield 1, the trailer oh which... Oh my god, yeah. At least they didn't name it Finite Warfare, though. You know? Yeah. Really dramatic. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like, that. This will, uh, this will end at some point, certainly. And the situation now is that Call of Duty continues its march into the future tech to the point where it's now basically Halo versus Battlefield, which decided, you know, we're going way fucking back. <laughs> we're going to go to World War One. World bitches. War One, which Ooh. has not been done that much. There was a game called Verdun that is a World War One game that's very realistic. If you want to be shot in the head by a bolt action rifle from a mile away without any clue of what just happened, Verdun <laughs> is a perfect wow. game for that. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I so do want that, John. <laughs> yeah, and some people really like that re level of realism. That it is very clear that Battlefield One will not be a realistic game, even though we saw no gameplay at all in the in the trailer. We saw a lot of crazy shit. And I thought you see some, a little bit. You know, someone killing someone with a shovel is realistic. You know that that that. Uh, no, I a thought trench. there was gameplay. Is what I'm saying. Uh, was the was... gameplay? I thought it was all CG. Well, it looked. I mean, was... it might have been in engine, but I think it was pre rendered. You might be right. Uh, I mean, I don't think there was any actual gameplay in that. Like, we didn't see the UI or anything like that. Oh, no, we didn't see that. I thought we saw... Uh, anyways, yeah. I thought it's we hard saw to say, because, I mean, right now, the Frostbite engine is so fucking good that we don't know whether or not that was pre-rendered or not. Like, because yeah. if we look at what uh, Battlefront looked like, it looked that good. So it's like, that could be gameplay, or maybe it's not. Like, hard to say. But yes, yeah, It just said... On Battlefield 1, it just said, in-game... Or yeah, in but what does that mean? Like, does that mean uh, that's yeah. going to mean in engine? You know, and in engine is different because yeah. you can still pre render that footage in some right. way. You know, you can set it up in such a way that because you're only showing exactly what you want to show. Whereas if you give camera control to the player, that's right, a different right, right. matter entirely. Right. So, um, there were, but then of course we had, we had Call of Duty as well. It's just like, well, we're in space now. And there's a huge disparity between the trailer for Battlefield 1 in terms of its likes and dislikes and the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare trailer. Infinite Warfare, I believe, now is the most disliked gameplay trailer in history on YouTube. It is. Yeah. It has a gigantic number of dislikes, whereas Battlefield That's 1... Like a million now? A million dislikes? Something like that, yeah. I'm and they'll all buy it, by the way. Of course they will. Uh, Every they... fucking one of them no. will buy that game. We're sticking to our guns, so to speak. Yeah, sure you will. Nope. Jeff? 
I was just seeing uh, Hastro, who's the owner of Envious. He's a big guy in the Call of Duty community. He was talking about this. And he's like, you know, and I thought he made a pretty valid point. Call of Duty fans are some of the more like trolly kind of young fan bases you can ever expose yourself Very to. Very true. Yeah. And that's not to say, I'm not saying that those dislikes aren't authentic. I'm sure a lot of those people are like, oh my God, another game pushing the future boundaries even further. Like, that's not what that game. I mean, so many of the Call of Duties, I think Modern Warfare 2 probably being one of the, the best for them ever, was like just grounded in, yeah, there was some slight technological advancements, kind of, but it was very it was very modern it wasn't warfare. Crazy. You know, there yeah. was like there's drones and there's unmanned aircraft, but we're not talking about fucking robots with Gatling gun arms and outer space uh spacewalks and shit like that. Like yeah. I think that was cool as like an off brand thing, and, and certainly Call of Duty can still reel it in because they have but I think what what's kind of silly about them is they went Black Ops, which also went futuristic, and then also Modern Warfare, which went futuristic, and that's their two like Call of Duty things. They kind of pushed them both in that direction. I mean, because you them both that direction, yeah, yeah, because you had Advanced Warfare was the last one, and then Black Ops Three is the current one, and now it's going to be Infinite Warfare. So that's from interestingly enough, three different developers: Sledgehammer, Infinity Ward, and Treyarch are all going futuristic in their own way. Black mm -hmm. Ops Three, I think, was um they did dial back a lot of the movement stuff that was in Advanced Warfare, which disappointed me, because I thought their movement uh, system was a, ch a paradigm shift in Advanced Warfare. But then again, I'm not a massive Call of Duty player. I'll play a bit of it every time they bring a new one out. But I'm not, like, hardcore into it. And I think th the interesting thing about the dislikes on this is there's two distinct groups. There's the guys who are just fucking savaging it because they're getting on the bandwagon and right. their votes probably don't matter at all because either they were never going to buy it to begin with or they're actually buying it and they're just clicking it because they want to be part of the fucking latest zeitgeist yeah. and latest circle jerk and then there are the guys like um you know as we were saying with hastro who are sick of cod going in a different direction to what they personally originally liked about it you know they they want the modern warfare back you know if you look at things like sales figures on pc which are not that indicative because sales figures on console are much more important for this game modern warfare 2 shifted 4.7 million fucking copies you know whereas black ops shifted 3.4 million the latest black ops actually outsold advanced warfare on pc i might add which mm -hmm. is interesting, even though it's been out for a year less. This last one it was actually well received. It was an improvement on Modern Warfare. Well, Modern Warfare Three, Black Ops Three was like was regarded as like, oh, okay, this is good. I I think Black Ops Three is a good game. Uh, the thing is, yeah. I also liked Advanced Warfare, but I know a lot of the hardcore uh, COD guys. The hardcore didn't. community did not. They did no, not like no, they did not. They absolutely didn't. And they want to go back to, I think someone described it as the boots on the ground approach, where they want they want to play as soldiers, they want to play as uh, tack ops, special ops guys, they don't want to play as guys with jetpacks, they don't want to have laser guns, they want to have realistic firearms, or at least near future firearms, and they want to be uh, in, engrossed in that, because that's what got them into it in the first place. Right. There, there is also a third group of people in that dislike train, and that's a different issue entirely. They announced a remaster of Call of Duty 4 which obviously is ludicrously popular and very successful. It's what... Call of Duty was great. Call of Duty 4 blew it up hugely mainstream and made it the most popular shooter franchise ever. They announced the remaster, but you can only get it as part of the digital deluxe or, like, collector's edition <laughs> yeah, of Infinite separately. Warfare. You can't buy it separately. So Brutal. people are fucking furious about that. And for that, I don't fucking blame them, because that is stupid. Like, what a weird strategy, because they they could feasible. I mean, you, their their idea is to incentivize and have the double down purchase, but there's such an absolutely established marketing frame of thought, which is like, well, what about all those people that would absolutely not get anywhere near that price figure that would buy one or the other, that are now being alienated, literally pushed away from a franchise? Like, uh, you're going to get a lot yeah. of sales. It's going to sell several million copies, guys. They're going to make their money. They will. Which, is, which sucks because they're going to keep doing this shit. But there's a lot of people that are looking at this and like, that's the final straw. Fuck that game. I'm going CSGO or I'm going Overwatch or whatever. Mm. I'm out of here. The, the issue, I think, from their perspective, I think what they're probably saying, not only do they want to really push the Infinite Warfare sales, uh, people have been saying, oh, well, COD's dying off. It really isn't. There was uh, someone, and I don't know how true this is, apparently was able to access uh, some of the systems which track the stats on console, and they were claiming that there were a million concurrent players for Black Ops 3. That's fucking enormous. Like, that concurrent player base is massive. Uh, and even on PC... 
uh, Black Ops 3 is still doing well. You know, it's, oh, yeah. it is still one of the more popular games. Like, you can't, it's not dying. It may not be selling as many copies as previous titles, but it's still selling a shitload. Uh, it's but a here's, stupidly huge game. Yeah, it's, it's massive. And I think PC gamers maybe don't see that because they don't see the massive surge in sales on console. But the console guys buy this every year, no doubt. But here's the thing, like, yeah, okay, maybe you're using it to incentivize and boost the numbers, but I think from their perspective, what they're actually doing is they're avoiding one game cannibalizing the other by both having them come out at the same time. Because I have a feeling Infinite Warfare's multiplayer and Infinite Warfare's sales figures would be bullshit if they also released a remaster of the most popular COD game of all time at the same time as yep. their new one. If they do that, some people are just going to go, in fact, a lot of people are just going to go and buy that. And then, yeah. and then, uh, then people are going to say, "Oh well, fuck! Infinite Warfare is the least successful COD of all time because we re-released the most successful one at the same time." Yep. So now they get to bundle them, and they get to benefit from the sales figures of both. So I think that's probably that's probably their reason. Bucks, right? Eighty, which is still a lot of fucking money. I mean, obviously you well, do get I two games with that, but sixty is the limit. I would tell you. I mean, for a lot of people, sixty is the absolute limit. Like, okay. of course. Uh, you know the collector's edition boxes always sell out, but they're a course, fraction yeah. of the sales. That is, they don't. There's no game that's like, yeah, we sold a million copies of, of deluxe edition. No, no game's ever done that. Although the reason there are people bucks. like the deluxe editions is because the margin on those deluxe editions is much higher. You know, the margin on selling a video right. game isn't that high, but you sell them a, a ninety dollar box full of plastic shit that didn't cost you anything to make and just you ship from China. They they make a huge amount of money on the back of that. And it's tough too. It's especially tough when you're asking for eighty dollars on a game. That's an airplane, by the way. I'm sorry. Uh, eighty bucks on a game that has been coming out annually, or even sometimes twice a year. A couple times it's happened too, right? Like your well, argument you for that game and the cost going up becomes harder to justify to a lot of those young parents of the kids that are asking for it. Yeah, not to mention the fact that Call of Duty has had this map pack thing going on where basically if you Ooh. want to play the entire year's season, actually the game's like $100. It's not 60 because you need the map packs, so otherwise you don't yeah. get to play on the latest maps, which is where all the, la the, you know, the top players are now playing. Uh, so you get you get uh, cut out. I mean, I hate that business strategy. I think it's terrible. Uh, I don't know yep. why they keep doing it, but it obviously works for them because mm -hmm. they're still pulling this off on a yearly basis. If they didn't see the numbers, yeah. they wouldn't. Keep they wouldn't it. do it. Of course they wouldn't. And this will work too. That's the sad part. Like, it's not gonna. I. I, I mean, who am I? I'm not like a business analyst or anything like that. But I would just guess it's gonna sell a cool, you know, three mil, three point four, three point five, whatever. Really crazy good numbers. But I honestly think if they went about this differently, we're talking their old numbers. Which, by the way, like a uh, seven, eight years ago was like. I think they sold something like five or six million at midnight the night before it came out, like literally in one day. Which is insane times. at that time. You know, oh, it's games are much bigger now. But that was yeah. that was a entertainment blockbuster in every sense of the word. It, it, yeah, but I, I do I do genuinely think if they released them both at the same time, then Infinite Warfare would be their worst selling COD game like ever, because everyone would just go yeah. buy the remaster. Uh, I don't think the PC guys would, because you could literally just still play Modern Warfare on PC and play all the mods and the pro mod and everything easy. But on console, no, you fucking can't. They'd buy that game in a heartbeat, especially if it was less than 60 bucks, but they wouldn't necessarily buy the new one. And it's weird to me, because as someone that only casually plays COD, I actually liked the Infinite Warfare reveal trailer. I especially liked it where, you know, where they went through the clouds with the spaceships. I mean, that section's probably going to be on rails, but it looked really cool. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, that's, you know, it's not really Call of Duty anymore, but I don't give a fuck because I was more of a casual fan of the series anyway. But more people like, I want modern military shooters. I'm still burned out on those. But now everyone's getting burned out on sci-fi shooters. I'm excited for when they really push the boundaries. And the next one is like, they're like, fuck it, it's year 1 million six, guys. Um, you don't even shoot guns anymore. People just think things and you die. And yeah. just like, it's, psych it's all psychic people. warfare. Call of Duty 600 psychic warfare. Yeah. Oh my god, Call of Duty. The control game, game comes out April 1st, just like, literally. Yeah. <gasps> it could be a VR thing. game that tracks your blinking. If you stare at something you blink, it dies. Oh, Dude, you know, you know what I would do if I was Activision and really wanted to shake shit up? Call of Duty Medieval Warfare. I'd just oh, go fuck. right the fuck that back. That would be such a funny response to Battlefield 1, It would too. be a hilarious <laughs> response to it. Oh my god. Or like Call of Duty Napoleonic Warfare. <laughs> yeah. Takes two oh minutes to reload God. your musket. 
Holy shit, yes. I mean, honestly, <laughs> like, we're at the point where there's actually only so many places you can go now, because you're trying to make these authentic-ish games, and Call of Duty's been skirting the line for a while by having basically near-future tech. It's like, well, that's conceivable. It's a little bit out of, you know, where we're going, but it's conceivable. Mm. And it's like, what other fucking wars do we have? Like, we're, we're out. Biblical warfare. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Oh, it's God. Jesus on the front, like, ripping off the cross, super buff and everything. That'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, that's a kill streak. Like, Jesus comes along, you know, you call in Jesus as, a, as an airstrike, you know, and he comes along and just nukes everybody. And Laser Jesus. That'd be amazing. Yeah, it's like, Laser blessed, Jesus. blessed yeah. are the meek, and he kills all the guys with the highest kill rate, you know? Be perfect. I mean, he comes in it. with a whip, and he just chases out all of the bankers and the money changers from the level, you know? It's, mm -hmm. Let's fucking do it, man. I would, I you know, call, call it you Crusader Warfare, and I was like, it... I mean, they've, they've either got to make shit up, or they've got to go for the really obscure stuff now, or go back to World War II. I think they, it, they're probably the best way is just to go cyclical again and go back. Because I, I have a feeling the next Battlefield, after Battlefield 1, will probably just be another World War II game. Because it's been ages. It's been fucking ages since we played a World War II era. But, um, you know, I don't hate the way COD's going. I haven't disliked the last few COD games. I guess some of the community has. They're still buying the fucking things, obviously. Uh, maybe we will reach that watershed where it just won't be working out anymore. Maybe we'll reach that watershed where they say enough is enough, but I don't think so. And if we ever get there, it's going to be a long fucking time, yeah, in my yeah. opinion. But getting oh, yeah. on to Battlefield 1, it looks... Obviously, we've seen no gameplay yet, but I love the concept. Yeah, same. It's not for me personally, but I can respect people's opinions on, on liking the looks of it. Why, why is it not for you? I mean... I guess with I guess with Battlefield the cool part is going to be like dog fighting with with uh, you know biplanes 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 that'll be fun Red Baron out there like I, I guess in the Battlefield world I like the concept um, I unfortunately am that boring guy that likes Modern Warfare one and two and like your AR rifle and nice sure, scopes yeah. and stuff like that uh, if they if they do cool stuff like a fucking Zeppelin shows up. And there's literally 30 people on that thing and, and like six muscle or um, machine gun turrets, stuff like that. And if you pop it, they're all screaming as it comes crashing oh down. Oh, my there. God. So like, yes, that's going to be really cool. But I guess my butt is just uh, I'm afraid that it's going to be everyone with fully automatic machine guns running around in the trenches, obviously blasting each other to, to smithereens. And uh, that's it. I think the thing that I uh, that I like about it is Battlefield's always been... Uh, they, they've liked the pseudo-authentic aspect of it, and I have a feeling they will not give you a lot of automatic weapons unless they're in place, you know? They're going to give you bolt actions, semi-automatics at best, you know? They're going to give you a, a 1911, they're going to give you an Enfield rifle, they're going to give... Uh, I mean, I was about to say M1 Garand, and I'm like, hang on a minute, they didn't have the M1 Garand back then, that was World War II, but uh, mm -hmm. they, if they have submachine guns, of which there were some in World War One. They were very, very basic and very shitty. You know, they, they will be very weird. They will be very difficult to control. If you're using an automatic, it's going to be like a Maxim gun. Or it's going to be a Vickers gun or something along those lines, which are all heavy machine guns, water-cooled machine guns. And as a result, you get a, a very different kind of combat where every shot matters. You know, there's the Pretty trench cool. gun shotgun, for instance, things like that. Flamethrowers, mustard gas... There's some weird experimental weapons that were used back then. I think they could. Well, I hope there's just gas everywhere if they want to go real authentic World War One. It's just like, yeah, you take your gas off, your mask off, and you die. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I, I don't know what they're going to be doing with uh, with that mechanic. They're obviously going to be using gas to some degree, but I think that that is a nice paradigm shift away from what we're used to, like bullet yeah. hosing guns. You know. No sights, we're dealing with shitty iron sights, or at best, the telescopic sight on a marksman's rifle. You know, we're dealing with old machine guns, Browning 30 calibers, Vickers guns, Maxims, all that kind of thing. You're dealing with fucking, literally a mace, you know, a fucking stick yeah. with spikes on it to hit them with. You know, a, a trench warfare tool, bayonets, entrenching tools, all that I kind of thing. I think that sounds cool to us, but I, I uh, you know, and it's Battlefield, another big genre, It's not, or uh, not genre, but um, big brand, I guess is what you could say. Um, it's not Call of Duty, but it's big. It's gonna, it, it will. All, it's just going to sell well. But I wonder how well it sells to what is mostly like Battlefield slash Call of Duty. That's your younger gaming genre, like or not genre, but a community, I guess, if you will call it that, selling base. 
Um, whereas typically the older style games appeal to older people, obviously not, I'm not talking 55 year old war vets, but I do mean like adult people, you know, I, I think battlefield has a older audience. And I think like, mm -hmm. I, I've always experienced that when I've been playing battlefield on voice comms, that a lot of the guys like they're in their thirties, like they're male professionals, you know, and they love battlefield. And I think that it sells a lot of copies to those people, whereas COD appeals to the younger audience. Though I still think that the younger audience is going to be pretty damn thrilled by the notion of flamethrowers and biplanes and giant fucking zeppelins bombing shit and everything like that. You know, yeah. horses as a fucking vehicle, that's a thing. There were horses in World War I. Uh, Terrible. The horses are going to die. The horses are going to get fucked. Like, the horses are going to get super messed up and it's going to be really sad. If I recall correctly, like, wasn't World War I the reason horse, like, cavalry if basically horses died off? Up in that game, that could be for some amazing gifs and videos and stuff. Oh, just a horse flying through the air, just tumbling... <laughs> Uh, that happens in the first season of JoJo's. Jack the Ripper explodes out of a horse. Go watch it, everybody. Wink. Nice. You just gotta get some anime in there. Battlefield yep. anime warfare is gonna be a thing at some point. Call of no Duty that. anime warfare. I mean, uh, to there, be fair, how ridiculous Call of Duty's been, it's been anime warfare for a while, I feel. I just, <laughs> it's just been pretending to be realistic. So I, I, think there's, uh, I think there's a lot of potential with that. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. But... Maybe this is the watershed where the franchise is going completely different directions, and then we figure out who's who's going to win out this time. If the oh. likes and dislikes are anything to go by, it's going to be Battlefield, but I think we know, I think we come absolutely on. know, it's Call, going to do just fine. Has yeah. Battlefield ever come even close to Call of Duty numbers? Uh, yeah, it has. Uh, some of them have, anyway. Um, the Not the Star Wars one, because that was complete shit. You know what's really awful about that? Is that Battlefront actually sold... Well, that's right. 12 million copies. Are you serious? I am deadly serious. The um, the sales <sighs> forecast was like uh, apparently insane. According to, you know, again, we don't know exactly how true this is. According to Michael Pachter, who is an industry analyst, he believes that they've sold that much. Um, EA, I don't necessarily think has, um, I don't know if they've released that. I mean, there's some there's a lot of mixed information on this as to whether or not this is true whether or not it's not uh, such a bad game yeah because gamestop claimed that it fell short of expectations but he wasn't going to tell us how much it actually sold and then peter moore's like the comment's interesting and he said i'm here to reaffirm our guidance of 13 million units sold in the fiscal year that's still that's a huge amount of sales uh, yeah. for, a, for a game that's just not good at all do you know, yeah. do you know and that Shyamalan's movies are all considered uh like fiscal successes, fiscal successes? Like they all sold well. that that's sold that's well. depressing i mean some of them are good you know yeah no, no, no. that's not what we're talking about john the he, recent he, ones of course came avatar out. success is great a couple yeah. of good movies no no uh yeah like lady in the lake and stuff like that all lady sold well. yeah made money avatar Please tell me Avatar didn't make money. What do you I'm mean gonna... Avatar? It's James Cameron. What do you... No, the other, the other Avatar. Oh, the Airbender. Uh-huh. The last Airbender? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, they all did well. Well enough. Uh... But, like, the reviews all say, and, you know, everyone... everyone it made 320 goes. million at the box office. Fuck everyone that went to see that movie. Hmm. Jesus. You're what's wrong with the world. You're the problem. All oh. of you. Fast and the Furious oh, is one of the highest grossing series of movies of all time. Good, because it's fantastic. Dodger. That's the thing that what? does the same thing over and over you're again. Wrong. You're wrong. Oh you're my wrong. god. Jeff, Jeff, you're wrong. <laughs> I can't believe. I cannot believe. <sighs> Alright, hang on. I'm going to use this Steam thing here to check Dodger's other movie reviews that she left. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, by the way, just to uh... kind of add information, they literally just released their fiscal reports today. 16 million copies. Uh, sorry, 14 million copies of Battlefront sold. That's now confirmed as of today. And it's a shitty fucking game, guys. It's yeah. terrible. It is a poo-covered shitty game. And, and you know what bothers me more than anything is there was an open beta to prove that fact and people still bought it anyway. Like, what the hell are you doing? I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of people that like running around with a hip firing blaster for three hours and then that being the entirety of the game. Get a power up and just get kills. Yeah. Everyone hip fire at him. Yeah. And he's dead. Oh, cool. Look at AT AT. Hip fire at him. I hate that game. Guys. Awful. How do you feel about moving on to releases? Yeah, let's do that. Let's crack on, shall we? Let's get away from that. Today, May 10th, we have Assassins versus Pirates. 
Well, that sounds like a high quality piece of entertainment. Doesn't it? It sounds like a new grounds game to me. I'm not yeah. going to lie to you. It probably looks like one too, I'd imagine. Next. Next one is Trans Ocean 2 Rivals. This is, I think. Trans Ocean 2. This is literally an economic shipping simulator. Okay. You don't get to judge. You just talked about liking a space game where you buy out other people's companies and buildings to kill them. It's in space. This is your kind of game, dude. I, I don't have to answer you. This one's in this, water. This, this is in water. Water's way less interesting. Next. Next up is called The Deed Dynasty. The Deed. Uh, the Deed is a game uh, where you're trying to get away with murdering your father. Yeah. Oh, the, I like it. The Deed Dynasty is like you, you now have to uh, play three members of a proud noble family and uh, you have to murder and plant evidence and stuff. I mean, it's an RPG maker game, but the deed was actually supposed to be surprisingly good. It's also like 99 cents, so. It's, yeah, it's like. It's pretty short. It's a way game, too right? much. Fast game. Jesse and I played it together. It actually sold very, sold very well and was uh, viewed as a very positive game. Made $200. 200 Uh The next game we've got is called Save Halloween City of Witches. I mean, could we not? Why not? You don't want to save the witches? What's wrong with you? I want to save the witches. It's a match three game, apparently, in order to save the witches. So Great. Next up is called Alien Blitz. Yeah. Better that they come fast, I guess. Yeah, it's a 3D action shooter. Oh, that is hideous. Oh my god. It's, like, it's a 3D action shooter. It's like, barely. Jesus, it looks like... <laughs> Ugh. Alright, next. Uh, well, the next game is called Desire. Ew. Go on. Well... What is it about? I don't know. I, I don't know, because I actually can't find it on Steam, weirdly enough. Uh, you can't find it on Steam? No. Well, well, it's, I, uh, it's called Desire. It's kind of hard. I mean, I, I, spe I spell like Desire, and I couldn't find it. anything like that. There's, which is a little weird, I have to say. It's, um, the only things I've got for Desire are the Book of Desires, which is clearly not the same thing. Mm. Ha. Well, how about Orc Assault? Uh, Orc Assault. Yeah, that should be easy enough to find. Yeah, this is a... It's a VR game, even though it doesn't look like it should be in any way. Because it's like a... looks like a kind of tower defense thing. Yeah, it's a strategy. I it's Orc Assault, but can we all agree that it would be better if it was Orca Assault? Orca that would be wonderful. Assault? Yeah, yeah. Killer agree. whales are on the march. You know, they have finally yeah, got sight of our shit, and they're going to come get us. Way better. Yeah, it's a truly unique tower defense VR. Yeah, because v tower defense is what I want out of my VR experience. Yeah, but no this doubt. one has orcs, John. Well, I mean, yeah, it that makes orcs. that makes it highly original in the tower defense genre. No one's ever done that before. Next. Next up is called P3 Biotic. P3 Biotic, yes. That is a $4 game. It is twin stick shooter. It looks pretty. Um, yeah, a lot of neon. Next. Next one is called Warrior's Wrath. Oh, wow. Generic, generic. Uh, it's cool see. that they are still naming games like that. Loot, craft, defend, fight. Yep, yep. Do all those. Do all of those things. Mm -hmm. Five playable characters: knight, samurai, Viking, archer, and wizard. It has a hunger system. It's some. It's. It seems like it's kind of don't starve esque in its look. It's in early access. Next up is called Galaxy Cannon Rider. That is a uh, quite the name. Quite the name, right? Galaxy Cannon Rider is uh, choose between 50 plus different heroes and ride around the galaxy. Jump from cannon to cannon and collect coins. Looks like a mobile game of sorts. Hmm. Next up is called Legion Wood Tale of the Two Swords. It's an RPG maker game. Okay. Uh, an epic length traditional role playing game. Next. Yeah. Uh, next up is called Starbreak. All right, I yeah, I actually saw this. It looked kind of interesting. It was it's it's like a unique skill-based action platformer MMO. That's where things got a bit weird. It's like apparently you explore sci-fi worlds alongside dozens of players, fight epic raid bosses, and it almost looks like uh, what's the name of that damn game? It's not Maple Story, is it? It's um, fuck. What was that sort of that really old school dungeon fight? Looks like kind of like oh. dungeon fight, but sci-fi esque. I might actually try that. It looks kind of neat. On May 11th, we have Dungeon Rushers, which actually looks like a really cute game. It is a uh, parody tactical RPG game mm -hmm. um, where you, like, you got your dungeons and you do, like, turn-based battles, it looks like. Mm -hmm. It's got a really cute art style. I like it. 
It looks kind of neat, yeah. It is early access, which is unfortunate, but it looks like it might be far. Yeah. Mm. Try that out. Uh, next up, we've got Meld. 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 That's a resource in XCOM. It is oh, yeah. a mind-bending puzzle game with 400 levels and a, a build-in editor that's built, by the way. Uh, it's definitely not attractive uh, in terms of its aesthetic. It's very much, these are grey hexes, and this is all that is, and they're, they're, sometimes they are coloured. Uh, not really into puzzle games, but there are different, oh, it's got a, a bunch of different power-ups, which is kind of neat, and they're all sort of space-themed, which eh, it might be alright. Next up is Warhammer 40k Carnage Champions. Love it! No. Have Love you played? Have you played Warhammer Carnage? No, but it's great. It's not. It isn't. He's Everyone lying. Buy it now. No, do not do that. Uh, Carnage. If you, can. you remember I was talking earlier about that shitty Infinite Runner thing? That's that game. They there have apparently uh, upgraded it for PC. Don't don't be fooled. It's probably going to be awful. I bought this on iOS when it first came out, and it was dreadful. See, so, John bought it. Go buy it, guys. Right, no, no, uh, no, it was a mistake. I didn't... No. <laughs> next. A best, the best mistake, right? No. Next up, on May 12th, we have Rocket Fist. That is a fucking incredible name for a game. Is it going to mm. be any good? It's an arena game with crazy robots and chaotic Rocket Fist battles. Uh, uh, it's a frenetic mix of dodgeball and billiards. Okay. All right. I, I care now. I'm interested. You, you've hooked me in with that description. The next game is called Neon Drive. Another neon game. Okay. Slick retro futuristic 80s inspired. Oh, it's it's kind of like, it looks like Tron basically. It's like a Tron mixed with Outrun by the looks of it. That looks pretty cool. I hope it doesn't suck. Next. Next up is called Princess Isabella: The Rise of an Heir. Mm, okay. Like the play on words there. That's pretty clever. It is a Get it? Point and click puzzle game. Okay. Next. It is a hidden object game. Yep. Next. Uh, next up is Final Fantasy X and X2 HD. Yeah. They actually come to PC, which yeah. is neat because that was really fun. I like Final Fantasy X. Yeah, I saw that. I was pretty good. I actually really like X2 as well, but mostly because their outfits were dope. So. <laughs> I mean, it is literally a dress em up game uh, masquerading uh -huh. as an RPG. So. Yeah. What is that? Right. That's uh, soon, isn't it? Yeah. On yeah. the 12th. Yeah. In like two days. Nice. I just hope the port doesn't suck because they've been having some real problems with the Final Fantasy games on PC lately. So hopefully they uh, don't fuck this one up. I'll Next. Play that. Next up is called Impossible Geometry. Well, I'm not going to bother then. Impossibly stupid then. I mean, impossible. Yeah. It's like we don't, don't make it impossible. What's the point? It yeah. literally looks like the Impossible game. Like this actually looks like a horrible ripoff of uh, the Impossible game and the millions and one different ripoffs of that. It's like you are literally a cube dodging the spikes. It looks the same. All right, and before that's actually the developer. I don't know. <laughs> next, this next one is called Battle Souls. I'm trying to find. I keep that sounds like a mobile game to me. Pictures, but I can't find like. Oh. Oh, yeah. it's it's another third person MOBA esque PvP game. Yeah. With class changing. Yep. Yeah. So actually. It says PvP. I don't know if there's any minions. It doesn't look like there are. So it actually looks like it's more like third-person Overwatch, but in a kind of fantasy medieval setting. Right. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Next up is called Goliath. Oh, I've heard of this. I we've talked about this before. It did come up. I uh, it the trailer looked pretty bad for it, but I like the concept. You you had to um you create your own uh, giant robot and you find plans and gather resources and you go punch giant monsters in the face with it. It's like, uh, Send me up. it's like if Pacific Rim was made of wood, you know, that, that's kind of the description of it. It could be good, but the trailer looked really bad for it. So I'm just hoping that the actual full game is good. Gotcha. On May 13th, we have Madness Cubed, which looks like a Minecraft shooter. Great. What about XCOM's DLC, man? Well, it's, it's not on the list for some reason, it's but it is coming out. It's not on the list, yeah. Jeff. Roger didn't make the list, no. did it? I didn't, no, I it's, it blame Giant Bomb. That's where we get our list from every week. They got it right. I blame Giant Bomb, man. Yeah, Giant Bomb's fault. Um, and then next up we have Refrain Prism Memories. How the hell do you even spell that? 
Oh, no. Oh, it's, yeah, it's RAF, RAF, RAF Rain. 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 Yeah. It is an empowering cyberpunk bullet hell shooter. It's very important that the, you know, this bullet hell shooter must be empowering. It's a, you know, I mean, it's a Japanese bullet hell game, basically. Next. This game is called Insincere, and it doesn't... I'm well, I don't believe you. It looks really old. Like, it, really old. And it's $50. Old. Oh, because it comes as part of a studio pack that gives all of their games. It's not actually being sold separately, from what I can tell. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it does look really old. It may just be crap. Uh, but yeah, it does. That That's a weird way to sell it. Yeah, Speaking I don't... of old crap. Uh, and then Doom. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was one, one thing we didn't get to talk about, but we can uh, touch briefly on it now. As I mentioned, I think last week, uh, this game has no review copies available. Basically, mm -hmm. what they said to us is the same thing that uh, they said to IGN a week later. Ha ha, we got there first. But they basically said that because Snap Map and multiplayer require an online connection, you can't basically play the whole game, so we're not going to give you any of it until the game comes out. Which you know is what? dumb I, I as fuck. That. I, I, mean, I, I that was fuck, you know what I mean? You, you, yeah. I'm Sna joking. Snarky bastard. But, <laughs> yeah, because really, only the only thing anyone cares about is actually the campaign. Let's be completely fucking honest about that. And we don't get to play it. For some, some reason... Some played it, though. They did an activation event, right? Where they had some random people play it and stream that? Yeah, yeah, they did. Because uh, there's just been a, a, there's a bunch of releases where you'll find a disclaimer right buried down the bottom of the fucking page which says, this video was made with the support of Bethesda. Doom footage was captured from the PS4 version of the game. It was probably done at a, a very managed event and all that kind of thing. So it looks like they're trying to very carefully manage the PR of this game, considering that the multiplayer did not like, get a great reception. Yeah. That, and we talked about that earlier, I think, to me, that is uh, pretty cowardly, honestly. I, th I think that they should be giving, if they really believe in their campaign, they should have given us access to it. There's no harm in doing that. You say, oh, we well, can't try the multiplayer. Yeah, but we could tell you what the single player is like, which is what the basis of what a lot of people are going to fucking buy it on. So if you're not going to let us do that, then, you know, I think that you're kind of being uh, pretty cowardly, honestly. You know, mm. you don't have confidence in your own product. So we have no idea how good it's going to be, but we're going to speculate on the basis that they're not giving it to us until launch that it might have problems. Who knows? If you don't want us to they've speculate been, like that, give us the fucking game. They've been aggressively <laughs> advertising it, though, to make up the difference, I guess. Doesn't surprise me. Yeah. But I'm hoping that the campaign's good. I really hope it will be. I don't want it to be bad. I, I love the idea of a new Doom campaign. I just hope it's good. I saw they had a video of... Um, there's an Easter egg where you go into like actual old graphic Doom yeah. area on the map. Yeah, it's, kind of it's a similar Easter egg that they had in uh, Wolfenstein, which was really yeah. cool. So that that might be nice. Um, next up is Murasaki. All right, nice. uh, it's a sauce, I think. It, it sounds like it, doesn't it? How do you how, how do you spell that? M U R A S A K I. M U R A S. Oh, I see. It. I've got it. Anime something. Puzzle, it's a puzzle explosion game. Explosion? You know, I've actually seen a few of these on mobile recently where it's almost like a uh, Buster Move style game where it's just like, instead of match three, it's like you get a bunch of shit together that's similar and then it all blows up. That's a thing apparently now. Uh, so it's one of those. Alrighty. The next one is called Innocuous 5. It's kind of like a minimalistic puzzle platformer, it looks like. Okay. Or like gravity arrows and all kinds Thank of stuff, God. but it's yeah, all very like those. shape based. Mm -hmm. um, Moonstone Tavern, a fantasy tavern sim, is next. Ooh, I, I'm waiting for a good one of those. Like, I think that's a really Finally. cool idea, like running your own tavern in a fantasy world or whatever. This one looks like it was made in RPG Maker, so I have a feeling it might not be the one I'm looking for. But um, I'm still waiting on Valhalla, that cyberpunk one. Oh yeah, that one looked great. Mm. Next. Uh, Elite vs. Freedom is the next game. Elite. It's an action-packed indie third-person shooter game. Those always go well. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a few dare resist the neo-feudalistic corporatist police state. That sounds like something you write in your Tumblr blog, but okay. I mean, it actually does not look too bad. All, uh, all credit to them for that. Uh, I think it's... Uh, it has mission locations. I'm trying to figure out if this is multiplayer only. No, it claims to have a single-player game. Uh, so yeah, I might try that out. Looks alright, actually, surprisingly enough. Next. Uh, next up is called Dino Bomb. It's a side scroller uh, where you have like a little jetpack. Okay. Oh no, it it looks 
cute, but I don't know. Fair enough. I was hoping it was Dino Bomb. That sounded like no, it would be way Dina. more fun. Well, that's, so that's disappointing. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Oh. Uh, next up is called Troll. It's a first-person experimental game of discovery and creativity, whatever that means. So, mm -hmm. it's sort of, yeah, first-person puzzle of some description. All right. Next up is called Ad Exitum, a horror survival jump scare indie game from Since Idea Games. Uh... All of their Horror screenshots are so dark, I can't, can't tell. see what any what's going on. Yeah, I have the same problem with it. It's like, well, it sure looks like a horror game, all right? Can't see shit. Next. <laughs> yeah. Next is the house in Fata Morgana. You know, I'm gonna like have a guess at this. I have a feeling this might be a hidden object game. I let's see if my powers are still working. Okay. Uh, okay. I these are all renders. No, I think I'm actually wrong this time. This looks like a visual novel. Yep, it's a visual novel. I was wrong. Wow, first time ever. There you go. I'm glad to be here for that history. Yeah, yep. that's that's historic. Yeah, it's a visual novel. Cool. Next up is called Fleet Com. Mm. It's a tactical squadron combat game, overflowing with hardcore maneuvers and space bomb gameplay. Ah, yes, yes, I've heard of this one. Uh, we'll see how that one turns out. It, it's a, yeah, looks alright. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Next up is called Crush Crush. Yeah, it's better than just Crash, I guess. Yeah, yeah. just one Crash. I mean, it's twice as good, really, when you think about it. I, I love the name of the developer behind it. It's by Sad Panda Studios. Uh, oh, this is a dating sim. This is a weird weeaboo anime dating sim thing. So you um, and Jenna will be playing it then? Uh, guaranteed, <laughs> yes. Uh, we will not. She's going to Vegas for the weekend, so thankfully she won't know about this game, which is wonderful. Okay. Next. Next up is Dungeon of Zolfan. Dungeon of Zolfan. All right, Zolfan. Sounds like a medication, like the dungeon of a medication. Oh god, this looks terrible. Uh, it's it's a wireframe like puzzle platformer block pushing thing that looks like it was made on the Vectrix. Let's not do right. that. Next, last but maybe least is Bizarre Earthquake on May sixteenth. It's Bizarre Earthquake as opposed mm -hmm. to regular normal boring earthquake. It's a third person point and click adventure. This screenshot. Oh my fucking god. Uh, you have to look at this screenshot. It's a thing of beauty. Let me see if I can capture this for you. It's, uh... That's me just using my ShareX. There we go. I'm just gonna... Just need to download this image. Because you're gonna love it. You're gonna... Out you see it? Yeah. That was a good impression of it, actually. Wait, what? Oh. This, uh, you did an amazing impression of the screenshot. I don't know if you realized oh, it. Oh, but... no, the screenshot hasn't shown up yet. Oh, okay. It's, it's coming in a minute. Uh, you, this is very exciting for me. Uh, let me just... Uh, is it on the stream? Up. It will be in a moment. Uh, you will, you'll absolutely love it. If I can find and actually get it on the screen. There we go. The name of the screenshot is like, oh, so they get to... Uh, I'm going to put it uh, in the corner. Uh, you know what? Let's just blow it up to... I was really excited because I, I was looking at all of the... There it the is. It's on screen. It's on stream right now. You'll see it in a minute. I think it's just it's just beautiful. <laughs> okay, I'm waiting with bated breath. Twenty second <laughs> delay on Twitch. That's how it works. You'll get it in a minute. One of one of your datables in Crush Crush is a big bear with lipstick on. Oh yeah. hey. Oh. oh shit. <laughs> Where's your hands? Oh. I don't know. Oh. oh. Yeah. That's she David Cage level well. sexy right there. Love it. Yep. Did yep. That's. Know? That is the screenshot. Uh, that sold the game to me, no doubt. <laughs> Bizarre Earthquake. That would be funny as fuck to stream, actually, though. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bizarre Earthquake. There it is. That's All the right. thing. Well. Cool. Well, that wraps up the show, pretty much, with uh, you know, ending on a high note, I feel, with that. <laughs> Definitely. Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, thank you very much for watching the show, ladies and gentlemen. Before we go, though, I'd like to certainly uh, ask Jeff where he could find his uh, stuff, what he's going to be doing over the next few weeks. Tell us. Let us know. Thank Inform you. Us. Thanks for having me on, guys. Always a pleasure. Uh, I think one of these times we should just tell Jesse Cox that nobody's going to be on, and then I'll surprise him. Yeah, that'll be good. And then finally I'll be able to square off with my arch nemesis. Um, if you guys all are uh, enjoying my stuff or want to watch some streams and follow competitive StarCraft and that kind of stuff, I also tweet a lot of pictures of English Bulldogs. Yes, that he does. That's all. true. Not French, either. He sticks with English for the most no. part. My family has, like, three French Bulldogs. I think the guys are back. But... Well, I mean, no one's perfect. Anyways, EG in control on Twitter, and then I stream on Twitch. That is in control TV if you want to follow that channel. I will be streaming 
XCOM, I stream CSGO. I've actually been playing a lot of stuff, though. Like I said, I, I was just playing Battlefield, Gothic Armada, and stuff like that. But still, every day for at least a couple of hours, sometimes three or four, uh, I do play StarCraft II and try to interact with the chat. That's, that's kind of me in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to Tours France this weekend. Ooh! Yep, for a StarCraft event. Then I come back, and then a week later, I'm at the Amazon HQ to host a poker tournament. And then we'll see how strong the powers of Kevin Rotterdam Vanderkoy is, another StarCraft II commentator, because he might have gotten me into a eSports poker tournament in Malta, which is a country. Malta is a really cool country. I went there really? 10 years ago. Yeah, I've been there. It's, it's really awesome. It's a really cool island. Everyone's chill. Uh, everyone drives on whatever side of the road has the shade on it. You know, it's, nice. so you'll you'll enjoy the hair-brained uh, driving action that you'll find in. Is that one of those things where you have to fly to a major airport, then fly to a small airport, then get in a car with a guy who drives you to a boat? Who then um, takes you pretty to sure I got there direct, actually, uh, from England, oh, but I don't think you'll get a direct flight from America. No, Probably. you'll have to bounce somewhere in Europe, but it's it's a bigger island than it sounds. You know, but Malta okay. is a lot of fun. You'll enjoy it. Well, cool. So that, that's my life in a nutshell, guys, and. Uh... Thank you all for listening to me and, and hanging out. Good times. Very cool. Dodger, what's going on with the channel this week? What's going on? Um, What a great question. It's a wonderful question, isn't it? <laughs> I'm Well, I'm currently like, I'm writing scripts for Welcome to the Fandom. I have a, a new harebrained idea for a video that I'm really excited about. So right now, I'm, I'm like working on videos, <laughs> honestly. Right. Uh, but right. just in general, I play a lot of visual novels. I do a news show every week. Um, and I'm working on some cool stuff now that I am no longer hosting for Polaris, so I'm really excited about that. You finally escaped the uh, chains. I've escaped. So there's that. Um, if you would like to watch me stream, I do it fairly often on twitch.tv slash dexteritybonus, mm -hmm. so please come and hang out, and that's about it. Cool. Uh, what am I doing this week? That's a great question. Probably trying to finish off the rest of my PAX videos. I still have like seven Adult Swim games I need to cover, as well as a bunch of other stuff, and a couple of videos we're going to have to remake because the footage went bad. Um, Battle Chef, annoyingly, went bad. Uh, that We have no uh, sound on that video. And also the Metronomicon, which is a rhythm game, which means you might want to keep the sound on. So uh, we're going to get, we're getting new uh, new builds for that. So we're going to redo the videos. So there's, there's plenty of other things. Uh, also, let, let me see. Uh, the, obviously, Stellaris is a big thing on people's radar right now. That is a very complicated grand strategy game i will be attempting it because apparently it is more of a forex than it is a grand strategy i'm gonna try to play it i don't know how well it's gonna go uh but you're gonna have to wait a while for me to get any real impression of that for obvious reasons doom i believe is coming out friday which is weird mm -hmm. but it is it's coming out friday the 13th i believe on purpose so we will not have a pre-release any kind of critique of that outside of the multiplayer which was not very good as i explained but i will be streaming that most likely on that day immediately so as soon as i can get a hold of it i will stream some of the campaign to give you an impression we do not pre-order video games stop pre-ordering video games for the love of god stop pre-ordering video games uh, you get the idea plus is xcom Ah! Well, I mean, even that didn't run that well on launch, so... But That's apparently true. there's going to be some updates in that uh, DLC, so I think I'm going to go back to it and check it out. Uh, hopefully it'll run a little bit better. So, that, that that's kind of the stuff I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be streaming some more StarCraft. Last night's stream did not go well. I played fucking terribly. I'm going to try playing slightly less terribly. And I am... Well, I guess I can make this announcement now. I'm in the process of sort of rebranding the second channel a little bit. Uh, so, because we have not put out content on it in literally six months. That's Total Biscuit. It used to be Total Biscuit StarCraft and Axiom Esports. It's going to become Total Biscuit StarCraft and Strategy, which will be StarCraft tournament videos, StarCraft first-person ladder videos, and also some other strategy stuff. Like, I want to put some Clash Royale on there. I want to do the daily uh, off-world trading company mission. I want to upload that. I thought that would be pretty cool. So it's it's a case of I want to kind of go in a different little bit of a different direction with that channel because Star the StarCraft tournament content is so infrequent that I need something else to go there and not allow that channel to completely die. So there's going to be some other stuff there, but I'm also organizing a monthly StarCraft event that's currently in the works and I'm going to be announcing that relatively shortly. So, so cool. It should be a really cool event. I've talked to Jeff about it. He seemed to like it and he is my biggest critic. So you know, if he likes yeah. it, it, must be good, right? It's going to be fun. That's right. That's right. Yeah, big thanks to everyone that tuned in to DreamHack over the weekend. That was really fun. The VODs are up on Dreamca DreamHack's official YouTube channel. You can go and check them out right now if you wish. I highly recommend Master vs. Firecake. That was very fun. 
The grand finals were very good as well. Neve versus Puck was really great. There's a lot of really cool shit on there. So go yeah. check that out. And big thanks to our sponsor this week, audible.com slash cynical. Sign up to get a free audiobook. 180,000 audiobooks available with some great narrators and an awesome selection of great audiobooks for your ears because you are too lazy to read and we know it. Audible.com slash cynical. There you go. Big thanks to our guest today, EG in Control, for shouldering a lot of the work here since we did not actually have Jesse to fill in with the bullshit. So uh, thank Always you. Always a pleasure, guys. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Great to have you on, as always. Uh, we will also be doing a show match at some point. Probably when you get back from DreamHack, we're going to be playing Battlefleet Gothic show match at some point. Yeah. So, I think that'll be pretty fun. Um, I'll be playing Orcs, and I will be recklessly oh, shit. going <laughs> forward at huge speeds, trying desperately to ram whatever ship you happen to have. It's gonna... You'll do well, because as a, if anyone watched me play it, I do not play Orcs, but I also like to ram, and, and none of the other races are necessarily super... Ram fight! It's gonna yes. be fun. See, see who can do the most damage. Just fucking collide with each other repeatedly. Yep. And this is like we, we are a high level strategy gamers, guys. We're just like mashing each other's ships into each other. It's, it's the best. It's the most fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, go play Battlefleet Golf. I think it's great. All right, folks, that's it. Was done for the day. Thank you very much for watching the Corruptional Podcast. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.